Hey, so this is Neil from MasterPaintingNow.com, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to sculpt this model here. So this is actually based on a model that is a 3D scan, and I had to pay for them. And so I had to, I had to buy uh, two different packs and, to get these models um, for, this, for this lesson, also for the free lesson on how to sculpt the butt. So specifically, I want to get into like more of the butt detail. Watch that video. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be going into such detail that here. This is an overview of how to do the entire the entire figure here. But anyway, if you want to help me, uh, because it cost me a lot of money to buy those models, like over $60, you want to help me recuperate some of that, just feel free and get one of my courses. If you want to learn how to sculpt uh, the human figure and how to draw the human figure better than you ever did before, definitely take that sculpting course. It's my 3D anatomy course. The link's in the description. Let's go ahead and get started here. So here's the model. I'm just kind of showing what this is the end result. This is what we're going to be going for. This is what we end up with. So it's a, like I said, it's a realistic model, realistic height. So it's not quite like a supermodel height or anything like that. This is more of like a realistic woman that you just see uh, an average woman on the street. And so that's what I wanted to, uh, to sculpt. And that's what the 3D scan of. So this is based again on a 3D scan. So 3D scan means that someone scanned a real person and that's making up the, 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 ge the geometry. Now this isn't like the final thing. We haven't added all like the skin texture and all that kind of stuff. If you want, maybe I can show a video on that. And then also I might do another video if you guys want of how to take this figure and then make a, a remesh low resolution of hers, but it's good for animating and, and that's good for posing. And then also it'll, it'll still have the high resolution superimposed on top of that. So you don't lose that, but you'll have that low resolution that you can actually pose her out or, or, you know, animate her or whatever for video games and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get started. And so this is the model it's based on. And what I'm doing here is, and if you guys want, um, I think I'll include, I can't include the rich, this original model because uh, you have to buy that yourself, which you can, I think it's at 3D S something. Anyway, um, I might make my model available, my sculpting available for you guys. So let me know if you guys want that. But basically, you can do this on any sort of 3D model. So just find a 3D model. There's some free online. And then you want to just use this method to kind of replicate it. And so what we're going to do first is start with the spheres. And this first sphere, you want to make sure it goes from the, go ahead, from the uh, bottom of the nose to the top of the head. So let's just kind of show that real quick here. Pull it out in front. And make sure it goes from the bottom of the nose to the top of the head. Reducing the size a little bit, and that's about how big you want the sphere to be. To kind of double check the sphere is the right side, or the right size, I turned off perspective here. You can do that in Blender as well. Go to the isometric view, basically. Is when you turn the when you move the second sphere, you duplicate the sphere, and all you do is you just hit duplicate here. I'm not going to be talking about how to use the software. Um, that would take too long. You should know how to use whatever software. You could, you should be able to do this in any software if you know the software. Any, everything I'm saying right now, you can translate over to that software. As long as it's a sculpting software. When you move that second sphere down, it should be right about at the collarbone. This is pretty universal for everybody. So the head is, um, once you have that sphere from the bottom of the nose, top of the head, once you have that sphere size, then the head is basically a sphere and a half wide. So the bottom of the chin is right here at the half of the sphere. And then from there to here to the collarbone, it's another half of the sphere. So from, anyway, so it's just a new measurement that I recommend getting used to for sculpting because it just makes sculpting easier. Because when you're sculpting, you don't have to worry about perspective. And I, I mean, you know, dividing the person into eight, heads, into eight heads or even seven and a half heads or six heads, depending on the kind of person you're drawing, that measuring works great for drawing. But for sculpting, I find this is just better. And also, I, I find myself using this sometimes when I'm drawing. But this is always the case with sculpting because there's no... You don't have perspective when you're sculpting, right? You have actual measurements you could take, and they, they're they always the same because you're dealing in three dimensionality. So you don't have to worry about, like, when you're drawing a three dimensional figure on a piece of paper, you have to, like, the arm's coming towards you at all, then it's being foreshortened. You have to account for that. You don't have to do that with sculpting. So the next measurement that's important here is you have two more spheres. So this makes up the rib gauge from the top of the collarbone to the bottom of the ribcage is two spheres. 
Now, keep in mind, you, you have the trapezius muscles in the neck that comes up here from the top. That's not part of the rib cage. Though. I mean, there's part of the ribs still come up here. There's like one you can kind of see like this that wraps around like this. But anyway, just know that, that we're measuring from the clavicle right here, the collarbones, down to the bottom of the rib cage. And then you'll note that the hips actually start like down here a little bit like that. Remember, there's a gap between the bottom of the rib and the top of the um, of the rib cage. Not rib cage, anything. the bottom of the rib cage, top of the hip. There's this gap between there, and that's where the love handles are. And right in the middle of the love handles, that's where the belly button is. This is pretty universal as well. This doesn't really change. What will change though is um, sometimes maybe their torso is a little bit longer. Some people's torso is a little bit shorter. She has a little bit more of a shorter shorter torso. And so you won't have quite two spheres next. But typically, you'll have two more spheres, and that will be the bottom of the crotch. But you'll see with her, it's not quite the same, or it's not quite the case here with her. So she has a little bit shorter of a torso than what would normally be the case. So if you want like an... I don't know if you... I don't like using words like ideal, but if you want like the... A template like a standard that you can use and you can always use that and get good figures that look correct you can go six spheres so six spheres will be from the top of the head to the bottom of the crotch and then uh, if you do that you'll always get a nice looking figure but I want to match the model so I'm going to move this sphere up so that we it's about um, she's about five spheres and a little more than a half. Not, not not quite five and a half, a little over five and a half, maybe five and three quarters almost. And I just want to make sure that measurement's accurate because, you know, now what you do for the legs is you just take another sphere and you match it up with this bottom sphere. Whatever, wherever this bottom sphere is, you match this up to it and that's where the leg starts. And that's universal. So if this was happened to be down further because the torso were longer, then this would come down as well. This The bottom of this sphere and the bottom of this sphere are pretty much matching. And then you'll have six spheres again. That makes up the leg. Three spheres for the top of the leg, which divides the knee in half. And then three spheres for the bottom of the leg. I didn't mention this in the video, but or I didn't show this, but there's two spheres for the top of the arm and two spheres for the bottom of the arm. But the from the bottom of the arm, from the elbow, it goes to the to the first knuckle here. that The knuckle you punch with. Right, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't go to the wrist. It goes to the knuckle. So, But that's a, that's a pretty universal measurement on pretty much anybody. Some people have like longer arm index. You know, they have really long arms. Like uh, not just because they're tall. I mean, for the for the height of their body, their arms are longer than than most people's. And someone like that would be um, Devin Larat, the arm wrestler. Awesome arm wrestler, which is really entertaining to watch. But anyway, if you've never seen him, definitely definitely watch. You can watch him. You see, how, see there how it comes right there to about the middle of the kneecap, and then three more spheres to the bottom of the foot. And there you have it. So that's the measurements. One of the measurements I want to show is if you take the sphere, you can also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just link all these together, merge them all into one layer. You should know how to do that in Blender too. It's pretty easy. I'm going to pull this over here towards in the center. Now we have two spheres. And that makes up about the width of the breast. If they have anywhere like a B or even a, well, more like a C size. In order, even at a B though, because remember breasts hang on the body as an angle. So even a B, a B cup, the breast hangs out a little bit wider than the ribcage. But this is about like a C cup. So anywhere from like a C cup, D cup, you have about this measurement here. So basically the ribcage is not as wide. It's right about here in here. Let's just keep that in mind that the, the ribcage is not as wide as the breast. And then the widest part of the hips are about that same these two spheres across. You might get a little bit wider out here, um, right at the crotch line, if they are a little bit heavier there. Like she has a little bit more extra fat in here. So, but even sometimes a skinnier woman, they might be a little bit wider than two spheres here. So just keep that in mind because the the femur bone pokes out right here. And so I'm just showing that kind of measurement how it looks. And the other thing too, from the side view, which we'll get into later, the Leg is about a sphere wide at the top of the thigh, and the from the side view, the hip is like toward, more toward the center of the tummy is about a about a, a sphere wide as well. So what I'm doing here is I just append. I you just hit the append button, and then you append a cube in here. I'm gonna pull the cube up, and I want to just use the scaling tool to kind of scale it. 
and I want it to be, you know, match the, this, these two spheres wide, and then match these two spheres tall. That's not quite correct as far as the hip bone goes. The hip bone is more down here. Because remember, this is the bottom of the rib cage, and this is the top of the hip bone would be right about here. Because remember, there's a there's a space between that. I'm filling in that space with this cube because it's just easy to sculpt that way. You know, it'll start making up part of the, uh, and I want to be about a sphere wide here as well. But um, that's up here. It gets a little bit wider, you know, where the buttocks are, but we'll be adding the buttocks. So basically, without the buttocks, it's about a sphere wide. Now I'm just show, I'm just showing, like, see, I'm, I'm right. It's about a sphere wide here. And then at the thigh, about a sphere wide. And now I'm just kind of matching up the model. Originally, I was going to um, do like I did the other video where I show how to how to sculpt breast, and I just went by the sphere measurement for that, and it came out fine. But this one, I really wanted to match the model as close as possible, so I'm I'm using the model as a reference and making sure it's matching up. Now you can do this too. You might feel like it's cheating, but keep in mind. Uh, famous sculptors, like all the all the great sculptors of the past, Michelangelo, all those guys, they they use measuring techniques. So they they would have you know like a either they would use like a thread or something to measure, or they would have like a caliper. And what the caliper does, and, and they sometimes have two of them. So you have one caliper where you're measuring the live model, and then you would either multiply that by two, or divide it by two, or divide it by four, depending on whether you're making a smaller sculpture than the model or a bigger sculpture than the model. They also have these calipers where they have two ends, where you can measure one end, and then you can set the, you know, how much smaller of a scale you want, if you want to do like a one-fifth of a scale of a human. And then the other end, ma you know, matches that. And uh, you can, I should probably show if you don't know what these look like, let me show a picture. So kind of like these here, these are the normal ones where you would do different, these are like to take measurements of different parts of the head and stuff. These are different kinds you can get. And this with this kind, you have to actually do the math. So if you, unless you're doing a one-to-one -one sculpt, if you're doing like a life-size sculpture, if not, then you would take the measurement and then you would divide it by two or divide it by four or divide it by eight, depending on how much smaller your sculpting is versus the live model. If you're doing a bigger model, you have to multiply it by four or something. Like when Michelangelo's uh, David, David is a huge statue, by the way. I've never seen anyone like next to it. So it's a gigantic statue. And it's just amazing that he did a statue that big. But that's how he does it, right? So if you're wondering, how do they do these big-ass statues like that? Well, the same way you do small statues. You do a lot of measurements. And so you're measuring it to the real person. But it still doesn't take away the talent. Trust me, try it. Try to do exactly what I'm doing, and you'll see how hard it is. It's not easy. Sculpting is difficult, so. And this is the other kind I was talking about. This is quite a cheap one, but they make these, like, bigger. And so depending on where you place this pin, you can make the ratio different, right? So this would be, you're measuring the big model, and then this would automatically show you the smaller part that you're trying to make. And so you just take this one measurement, and then this locks it, and then you you have, this is the size that you're going to be showing on your model, so you're making it a little bit smaller. Anyway, so those are the different methods to do that, but they all did measurement. Here's the, here's actually one. See the smaller side, the bigger side, and then this is the, this, the pin in the center. This is a good quality one. So you take a big measurement, and this will give you the smaller measurement. And, and these different pins, you can like put them in here and get different ratios, like one to five, or you know, one to four, or whatever. So you don't have to like do the math or anything. But anyway, the math is really easy, so it's not a big deal. Let's continue on. So you would do all these measurements, right? You would you would measure from here to here. You'd measure from here to here, here to here, here to here. And then that's for the side view. Then when you're doing the front view, you would do those measurements. And then after you kind of sculpted everything and put all the clay into place, then you would go back and measure again to make sure you didn't add too much. And if you did, you would take some of it away. And so there's a lot of measuring involved when you're trying to get a likeness. Now, if you're just doing like a quick, a quick sculpture where you're not trying to get the likeness perfect, then you would just kind of eyeball it. But doing all the measurements, doing a lot of sculpting with measurements is going to make you better at eyeballing. You're going to start getting a feel for how everything is supposed to be. So I highly recommend to always, always do measurements if you're going for a likeness. And if you're, start, just, if you're just starting out, do measurements or use this method here. Using the spheres is kind of like a measurement for that particular model. It gives me an idea of 
you know how everything's going to be. But it, you know, like I said, it's pretty universal if you use that method. And like I show, I, you can do this without you know just using the spheres and without matching up to the model. I did that in the in the video showing how to do breast, how to sculpt breast. So it works that way as well. And now I'm just matching it up to make sure that I'm getting on the right ballpark here with the model. It looks like everything's kind of fitting in right. What I like to do with this egg shape is I like to come up a little bit higher than the collarbone because that's going to start making the trapezius muscles and the neck. And it's just good to come up a little bit higher than that. And you'll, you'll see it just makes sculpting easier. And then you can kind of pull out the side here for the pec muscles and you can add the arms on. We'll do that and I'll show you. It's really easy to do. So starting with this basic shape is nice. Now, I originally did this tutorial for the how to do butts. And so we're going to kind of focus on, at one point, we're going to kind of focus on the butt a little bit, and then we're going to go back to the to the figure. It's not like the normal order I think I would work in, but I like to get the whole kind of model um, worked out with the basic shapes before I move into uh, doing things like butts and stuff. Now, you don't have to start with a box for the hip, but it's just a really good way to learn the structure. Like what you're taking away helps you understand the structure better, like the three-dimensional structure the shape, the form that we're working with. So what I do is I dynamesh. I like to dynamesh like usually the default I think is 168. So I just def I think I'm just using the default here. And that's a great starting point. So just dynamesh it and that lets you kind of work on a little bit. It's going to really eat it up fast though when you um, even just use a smooth brush which is just holding down shift. It's the same as, as Blender. And that's going to really eat away at the um, geometry at this resolution. So you might want to pump it up to like 300 if you, do, if you want to like be able to smooth it out without eating up the geometry. What I'm going to do here is I want to, I'm just kind of using the smooth brush very lightly, just kind of smoothing all the edges, just to kind of get a smooth box shape first. And just kind of speed through that because it's pretty boring and easy to think about. You just smooth all the edges. You can be very careful, like I said, um, if you're too low of resolution, it will eat away the box very easily. And I just want to make sure that I'm kind of still in the, in the right ballpark here. It looks like, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm in the right ballpark. So I'm going to show just kind of some basic markings here. This is kind of like where um, you can have the side of like the, the leg, where the leg kind of attaches, where you have the leg markings. I just want to kind of put that in there. And then I want to add this little mound right here. This is the mound. This is your pubic mound. Everyone has this, so you want to put that on there. And then there's this shape right here I really want to show. It's kind of like I showed you um, in the butt video, if you've watched it already. It's like this house shape. It goes like this, comes straight line here, and goes like that. Now, the thigh muscles are blocking part of the house shape, but I'm still counting for it. So it kind of goes like this, like that. Or you can just kind of do like a triangle. But you can kind of visualize the house shape, which goes across. Here's the bottom of the house, here's the side walls, and here's the roof. And kind of imagine that shape. That shape is there for everyone. So, including males, by the way, it's just harder to see because they have a penis blocking it. Now, what I'm doing is I'm 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 carving away. Just hold down the Alt key and Z brush, Control key and Blender, and then use the clay brush. And I'm just kind of carving away the clay here. So I'm just carving, carving, carving away. For now on, I'll just talk about I'm removing clay or I'm adding clay. So here, I'm removing clay. Removing clay. Because I kind of want to uh, add some clay there. Adding some clay. Crease brush. The damp standard and Z brush. Adding a little bit of clay. Taking away clay. Taking away clay. Adding some clay here just to kind of show the shape of the uh, where the leg attaches. And this is the kind of main shape I want. And then what I'm going to do is on the back side, I'm going to take all this clay away. I'm going to keep taking it away until I have this from the side view. I want this like angle where this is lower and this is higher. This is angle, like a ramp. I'm going to exaggerate that angle for you. It won't be quite this dramatic. So you can see the angle here. That's the angle you want. The butt, I know I, know I told you the butt hangs down lower, but that's a separate thing than this. So if you like were to feel... I mean, you, can't, you couldn't do this without being sexual, so. But um, if you were to like rub your hand right here on, along the crotch, you'll notice it kind of angles back and up like that. So if you were to go from, I'm going to be graphic for a second. If you were to go from here and then up to the butthole, it's going to kind of have this slight slant. 
I'm exaggerating it here to show it, but it's definitely there. So everyone has it, unless they're deformed, which is probably a pretty rare deformity. It has to do with the shape of the hip, so their hip would have to be deformed, the pelvic bone. So now I'm just kind of matching it up to the model a little bit there. My, um, I don't know if you noticed that, but my move tool is not working correctly, but I will fix it in a little bit. If you're, you'll see, I'll show you what it's doing in a second. If you ever have this happen, just, just close blend or close ZBrush and reopen it because I couldn't figure out how to fix it. If you know how, if you know a fix, let me know. But that's my fix. I just saved my file, closed ZBrush, reopened it, opened my file again. Taking clay away. Taking clay away. Taking clay away. Taking clay away. Instead of using the move brush, I just like took clay away. I just want to make sure it's matching the model once again. You don't have to do that. You can just kind of eyeball it if you want to, or at least at least at least take some basic measurements though, like the 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 width of the hips and things like that. Which is easy to do in, in digital too. So you just um you can measure it with primitives, right? Take a primitive like spheres, whatever you want, and kind of measure the model out with spheres or whatever, and you can use that as your as your um, measuring device. I think there's also a ruler. I know, I know that for sure there's a ruler built into Blender, so you can use that. I think there's a, something like that in ZBrush too, but I never use it. I just use primitive shapes. All right, so now I'm dividing um, a vertical line for the rib cage, and then I'm, and, I'm, and if you have it like this, where the collarbone is right about here, and I just went up a little bit higher to start to start kind of simulating where the um, trapezius muscles are going to be and where the neck muscle is going to extrude from here from anyway from but if you have it shaped like this a little bit higher than um, you know the collarbones here you divide this in half pretty much and that's about where the sternum ends and then you have the the rib cage starts coming out like this and wraps around so i'm just putting some basic markings there and then i'm taking clay away right here because there's always this indent um, not always, I guess it depends on how much uh, fat the person has, but typically, especially with females, there's an indent right here um, where the ribcage divides, and so I'm taking clay away, so I indent that in. It's good to have that right away, so that when you start adding other details, it'll be there. Just kind of showing where the sternum's at. It's not something that'll be part of the final sculpting. Now right here, see if this starts happening, see how the move tool's not working right? That's not how the move tool's supposed to work. If you get something weird like that, don't waste your time, unless you know another way to fix it. Don't waste your time. Just uh, close the, save your file, close the brush, reopen it. Reopen your file, and it'll, it should be fine after that. And so I, I, I goof around trying to figure it out, and I couldn't, and then I... This, this one was still kind of working how it's supposed to. This is the morph topology, but the other one wasn't, so I went ahead and just closed it out, reopened it again, and everything was fine. I tried different things, and then finally I just had to close and reopen it. Now, I want to push the back in here a little bit like this. Take the move tool, push the back in. You want to shape kind of like this. Right, so the rib cage is kind of arced like this, and then that's, remember I tilted the, when I had the um, hips as a, just a, a cube, whatever, I tilted the cube, right? So you have a tilt here and a tilt here, so I kind of has this kind of curvature like this from the side view. This is important. Pretty much everyone has this unless they're like standing weird. I'm just kind of matching up the rib cage. I noticed that was a little off center, so I'm just kind of matching it up here. Move it back. I'm just making sure that it matches from front to back here. Again, this would be no different than if I would do the, doing measuring, right? This is just an easy way to kind of measure it up. Um, but again, if it feels like you're cheating, then if you think measuring is cheating, well, then all all sculptors cheat pretty much. Pretty much any sculptor that um, is going for a likeness or is you know doing clay and stuff, they all do. They all take measurements. So some take less measurements than others, but they all do measurements. So just know that um, the only way you're not going to do measurements if you're just kind of winging it, going, but you're still taking eye measurements. But they, anyway, so. But if you feel like it's cheating, then you can either just eyeball it like I did in the other video for doing breast, or you can just take some measurements and work on that, work based on those measurements. Like just, you know, work based on the primitives that we set up, the spheres for measuring.
or you can take some, you know, some isolated measurement just to make sure like overall everything is kind of working. Like you can measure the model from here to here using a primitive. If you're using, obviously if you're 3D sculpting, so you'd use like a primitive and go, okay, how wide, and this is about a sphere wide right here, by the way. And then, um, you know, take it from the other side and stuff, which is like two spheres wide. Okay, everything's matching up pretty good. I wanted to make sure that where the rib cage in the model is, that it's kind of matching here. I wanted to make sure I, I get it close to the model. Like I could just, you know, do that halfway division mark and that's going to look good, but I want it to have accuracy. And so that's why I went back and forth to make sure it's kind of matching, just kind of throwing some basic form there, which I end up not using anyway. And so what I noticed is it wasn't quite centered. So what I, what I do here is after you're working on it, if you notice that you're not centered, you want to open up Morph Topology and then hit Mirror mirror and Weld. And that's going to make it to where it's mirrored on both sides and everything's proper. So that way when you're, as you're working with um, and sculpting with X, you hit X, you know, hit X off and on. So as you turn X off and on, um, that turns your mirror sculpting off or on. And so when you're mirror sculpting like this, it'll be correct. Otherwise, you're going to get funky results. And if you ever notice that that's happening, just do that mirror and weld, and it'll fix everything. And if the mirror weld doesn't do anything at all, then you want to first mirror by going a little bit down further. There's some, I think uh, I think it's called like deformation. You click on that, and then there's a mirror. You just hit that mirror button, and then go back to geometry and mirror and weld, and it will work. So then once I have the two pieces, everything is working, I'm going to put these two pieces together. And this is really easy to do in, um, in ZBrush. So all you have to do is just go to the two, make sure the two layers are, one is, it doesn't matter which one is on top of the other one. It's going to do the same thing. Just make sure they're next to each other. Click on the top layer and then open up the merge tab under um, subtool. And then just click merge and it'll merge it down. And then you can either click OK or you can click Always Skip This so it stops asking you. So you can just merge a bunch of things very quickly. Once it's merged, though, you need to DynaMesh it. So go back to Geometry, and then go to DynaMesh. And then I'm just going to stick at the... Actually, I'm going to go a little bit higher. I decided I want to start working at like 320. So I think 300, around there, 300, 320, 360. Really good. I think it's a really good spot to kind of do most of your sculpting in. And then you'll then you'll start bumping it up to like 500, and then finally for me up to about 800 to 1,000. And then after after that, um, that's pretty much as high as I want to go for dynameshing. Then what I'll do is I will take my model and remesh and everything, like do a um, good Z remesh on everything, and then superimpose the high detailed model back onto that. So I have layers of um, Subdiv subdivision so then I can you know add the final details of like the skin and stuff and it's a good good thing to use and I'll show you how you can do that uh, later on not in this not in this tutorial but another one if you guys want so the belly button how do you figure out the belly button so if you're not you know doing measurements right and if if you don't like this method of measuring where you're just working working with it on another layer and you just want to like do measurements you can always just take measurements go okay so from like the bottom of the rib cage you know to the belly button how far is that and then from like this up here from the crotch up how far is the button? that's a measurement you can take from the bottom of the crotch so measure from the crotch to the belly button now you have a measurement you just take that measurement and put it on your model and bam you know where the belly button's at but in general and this is pretty universal where the belly button happens to be is halfway between the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the pelvic or if you think about where the love handles are at it's right in the middle of the love hand. So that's pretty, on this model, that, that is the case. So it's most always the case. The belly button is pretty much right in the middle of the love handle. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of adding clay. I'm just kind of pushing sideways. I'm kind of just, you know, pulling where I want that form to be. Some of these forms are quite subtle on a female model. So you want to just be really subtle with it. And I'm just kind of showing some of the, um, the muscle here, some of the abdominal muscle and the fat tissue. 
and then some of this lower portion here. This this portion here, so when you have someone that is a little bit fit but not too fit, you'll see some of these abs up here a little bit. But then once you get from right here, a little bit above the belly button, right about this halfway mark where you have this division where the um, the ribs stop and then the hips start coming out. So right at that division right here, right when you, you start curving out again, right there is about where this top muscle usually is. You have this kind of fat roll right here. And then this part here is kind of like a, an oval shape right here. So this part of the muscle is like this oval muscle. And it usually is like that on, on women that aren't developed much. You're going to have this kind of shape right here. And it's actually a pretty sexy shape, I think. And then you have the love handles, which curve in right here. It's hard to see, but I'm curving in right here. I'm carving away. This kind of dips in. So this kind of comes up like this and kind of dips in right here and then kind of comes back out to the cage and the love handle. So it's important to understand these shapes. And I'll, I'll look at it from different angles so you can see what I'm talking about. And then I, I'm always kind of just lightly smoothing. So I have, I, have, I have everything on default, by the way. And I just have pressure sensitivity, so I just lightly press to smooth. I'm kind of just using the damp standard there. And then I'm using um, clay, and I'm taking away clay here. The clay strips, I'm taking it away. Taking away clay there. And just kind of starting, I'm just starting to kind of block in the basic shapes. I'm taking away clay. And I'm adding some clay. I'm going to add some love handles here. And there's taking away clay. So you just kind of scoop out where you want the the divots to be in the back there. And so I'm making sure it's matching up. It looks like it's matching pretty well. Again, I'm trying to match the model. Otherwise, you can just kind of you know go by where it's supposed to be. Um, you know, with the basic ideal person, which again, I show in my 3D course. So if you really want to learn like all the anatomy where all the muscles attach and all that kind of stuff, and, and that's going to help you be a better drawer and painter as well. So definitely take that, even if you're not interested in sculpting, it's going to make you better, a better overall artist. If you're interested in sculpting, you definitely want to take it 3D anatomy course. So this is kind of triangle right here. And you want to make sure you have that. It's kind of a flat plane. Most of the bone sticks out there. So. adding some more love handles. And one thing I've learned about love handles, especially on guys, but it's also true for women, is you want to start up here on the side of the rib cage right about here, because that's kind of where it's attaching. And then think about the muscle kind of wrapping around this form into the front like this. So you have this kind of teardrop shape. And it really helps um, when, and when drawing as well, to think about it that way. But if when sculpting, if you like figure like something about your torsos aren't looking right, oftentimes it's the love handles that aren't right. It took me a little bit to um, get the hang of the love handles. They're kind of tricky. They kind of wrap around from the side and wrap around to the front. If you try, if you try to sculpt them any other way, it just never seems to work right. Like if you try to sculpt the front view and you're just trying to sculpt this little shape here, then you try and sculpt the side view, and it, it never kind of, kind of matches up right. So if you kind of start from the side and wrap around like this up from the side and wrap around to the front like this. That's what's gonna give you this nice love handle. And that's following the natural anatomy, the, nat the natural muscle anatomy. What I was showing there is just like, that's that. That's where the bottom of the rib cage is gonna be. And so a little bit below the bottom of the rib cage is where you have this like, this indent right here. This is music where the fat, the fat rolls. So when, some, when a woman sits down, even a guy too, the fat kind of, crunches up right here. They'll have the skin fold right here. And that's what I'm kind of showing. She kind of has some fat build up there. So I'm just kind of showing that. And it's, it's on the model. So just kind of following that. But I, w I usually put that on there anyway. And you kind of see I did something similar when I was doing... Actually, I don't know if I showed it on camera, but when I did the, uh, the breast video. What I wanted to show there is I just wanted to make sure I had that marking. So I'm kind of just putting that little bit of fat that kind of built up right here. She's a little bit you know, she's fit, but she's a little bit, a little bit chunky, you know. A doctor would say she's a little bit overweight, actually. And it doesn't look that way, I know. But that's what doctors say, because, like, you're not, like, in the proper, healthiest amount of body fat on your body. You know, which is, I think, for a woman's, like, 15% or something. Anyway, so uh, I'm just marking where the bottom and the breast are going to be. I just want to make sure I have that marking there. There's a measurement. You can just take a measurement. You can either, once you know you measure from the crotch to the belly button, you have a good measurement. So if you want to just measure from here to the bottom of the breast and then from here to bottom of the breast like that, an angle measurement. You can also relate it to other things. Um, you can relate it to the collarbone. 
you can relate it to um, like if I go from from here to here and then I measure from here to here and then I go where is this on that measurement that's the bottom of the breast you know like so, things like that so there's ways you can do measurement if you're just trying to do this based on a live model or something or even if you're just don't want to look at the model itself overlapping your your sculpting you feel like that's cheating like I'm doing then you can just do a physical measurement right so everything looks like it's matching up but like I said you can just just do some some measurements so you'd have I don't know maybe you can have your model that you're working as reference on either photos or something you can take measurements that way using primitive shapes or some sort of digital ruler if you're working in blender you can use the ruler or you can just eyeball it but I don't recommend eyeballing until you've done a lot of measuring if you have never sculpted measure So now I just I appended a cylinder. Now you can do this in a blender as well. So you can just, you know, create a cylinder shape and then, you know, you can mesh it as you're going along and then attach it, join the objects and then remesh. So it's a similar similar workflow you can do and just keep remeshing at whatever, you know, resolution that you want to be at in blender. You don't want to go too high in Blender because, you know, it really bogs down. That's, that's one of the benefits of ZBrush. Like, I think one of the main reasons I like ZBrush more than Blender is one, some of the brushes just feel really good. But Blender's, Blender feels really nice, too. But anyway, the main thing I like about ZBrush over Blender is that you can you don't have to worry about the polygons. Like, with Blender, you're always worrying about how many polygons are on this shape. And it's like, oh man, do I need to break my, my figure up into two different shapes? Do I need to make his head a different shape from the body and then like, you know, not actually attach them? Because once you get to about a million polygons, it just starts going to shit in Blender and it starts, you know, even when you have a good computer, I have a really nice, fast computer, 3080 graphics card and stuff. And even with all that, and then like one of the, one of the fastest CPUs on the market, even with all of that, it, um, it bogs it down. So, but with, with ZBrush, you don't have to worry about that. Even if you have a slightly slower computer, it can handle so many polygons, so you can just just keep keep adding to your model. You don't have to worry about keeping things separate. And so here's remember where I showed. Um, well, actually, I don't show that in this video. So the leg here. If you don't watch my butt video for more detail on this, but the leg kind of has this uh, shape that I just showed. Where let's go back here. I was going to show it right here. So what's going to happen is it's going to kind of curve in right here and come up like that to for the rectus femoris muscle. And it's important to make sure that, see, I kind of I made it oval like that to already start to account for that shape. Just dynamesh it. Just going at the default dynamesh, 128 is the default. It eats away really fast at it, so you might want to pump it up once you want to start smoothing it out. So I just want to get the basic shape here. And I'm, see how I'm kind of smashing that in with the move tool? Because this has this angle right here where there's clay taken away. So I'm just kind of accounting for that. And then I'm putting that rectus from Morris in there. Putting some of that side muscle, which kind of looks like a flander or something like a fish from the side view. I'm kind of pulling this in so I have that shape. And I'm going to end up dynameshing at a higher resolution here in just a second. I like to start at 128 just to kind of get the basic shape in there. And then I'll, when I want to start smoothing it, I'll dynamesh it to like 300. So I'm just kind of measuring up with the model. This is really important. So as you come here, you have this fat tissue. And remember the fat tissue here is it's carving into the shape right here. You have this kind of house shape I talked about. This is kind of overlapping in there. And that's not always the case. Some women don't have enough fat tissue here on the inside of the thigh. But this model does, so I'm accounting for that here by pulling it in. And you can see that shape. That shape's really important. So it kind of has this bump that comes up here for the rectus femoris, and then it kind of slants down like this. Right? This is carving in right here, and it kind of comes out like this for the for the fat tissue. And then it, and then this all right here kind of comes in and stops and indents here. So you got to think about all these different shapes. And and even if you never get good at sculpting. It's going to help you be a better drawer and painter because you're going to you're going to understand these forms better, the actual three-dimensionality of the form. And so when you're looking at references, 
you'll know what you're looking at. You'll understand what you're looking at and how to kind of translate that better. So it's definitely worth trying to sculpt, even if you never get good at it. Or like me, you might try to sculpt because, you know, you heard it's going to make you a better artist overall. And then you fall in love with it. You're like, oh man, I think I like sculpting better than drawing and painting, <laughs> which is my case. Uh, and I go back and forth. Sometimes I'm, you know, I'll, I'll really like sculpt a lot and I'll be really into that for a while. And then I'll kind of not do it for a little bit and I'll, I'll get into, I'll get back into like, you know, digital painting again or acrylic painting or something, not acrylics. Well, yeah, I do acrylic and oil, but you'll get back into that for a while and then, uh, you know, drawing and maybe inking for, you know, comic books and uh, go back and forth with my, what I like. So I'm just making sure everything matches here. Now, what's important about the thigh, if you're just kind of like doing a thigh in general, like from memory, you have the widest part out here right at the crotch line. And that's where the bone's sticking out. So you want to kind of make sure it kind of comes down here, but then it kind of sticks out a little bit right there. That's the widest part of the female leg. And then you want to taper it down to the knee. And you want to start with just a basic shape or just just taper down to the knee like this. It's a basic shape. But then you'll remember that, oh, wait, but um, you have the vastus medialis on the inside here. Then you have the serratus muscle, which comes, or not the serratus, the sartorius muscle. The serratus is up here. It comes here and it comes across like this and it wraps underneath the vastus medialis and it comes all the way down here. It pops out right here and it attaches to the lower leg boom like that kind of like to the tibia but there's also the gracilis behind it and there's so this basically the, the sartorius and the gracilis tendons bundle up here there's like a bundle of tendons right here and that's what sticks out right here like that so you'll have this fat mound fat mound that sticks out right here and then kind of then that would just kind of taper in here that's how it would normally look if you didn't have these these muscles Right? If we didn't have these tendons right here, then it would just kind of come out like this and taper like that. Like this side just goes wide to thin. It would be basic. It just go wide and would taper into thin. Because you can see that shape right there, right? Boom, just goes like that. But because we have those tendons right there, we have this other bump right here. So you have a bump like this and like that. So it makes a slight M, M like a kind of an M, right? The letter M sideways. Boom, boom. You see that? That's the shape you want to go for. It's really important. So, but knowing the anatomy is going to help you with all this, right? All that anatomy I just talked about. Like I talk, I show all of that and exactly where everything attaches in my 3D anatomy course. So, definitely take it. Um, I usually have it on sale for like 14, 15 bucks. And if you don't see it on sale, if you like click on the link and it's not for sale anymore, just let me know. Leave a comment in the video. Go, hey, I really want to take this course. And uh, if I, I can't afford the full price, so if I can get a sale on that, would be awesome. I can probably hook you up. So I'm kind of putting in that um, rectus femoris there. And I'm just getting like a basic idea here for now because I'm going to be focusing on the butt because this was mainly, this, when I originally recorded this, I was just recording it for like a butt tutorial. Definitely watch the butt tutorial. And this shape right here is super important. So you have um, where the butt comes here and it kind of attaches right here on the inside. And then you have this shape like that, that kind of got top of the house right here, the peak of the house. And it comes down like this to the pubic mound. You want to make sure that's there. Right there. That shape is really important. So I want to make sure I carve that shape in there. You can see the shape on the model too. You see how the, the butt wraps around right here and it curves and it attaches all the way here right? Like that. So you want to think about that. The butt doesn't just go like the muscle of the butt goes like this, right? But the fat curves all the way around and attaches on the inside, right underneath. You, you can't see that. You can't see from the back view. You can't see this, this fat right here because it wraps and tucks under. So when you're viewing it from the, uh, from the back view, you won't be able to see that, but it's there. And it's important that you put it there. Now, obviously, if you're drawing the back view, you wouldn't be able to see that, so you wouldn't draw it, but it's, it's good to know that it's there from other, for other views that you might draw. I'm adding this fat tissue here for the inside of the thigh. And I kind of went overboard, so I'm just kind of railing it back in a little bit. And this is where measuring would come in. Like You, you would, you would kind of eyeball it and look at it and go, hmm, I don't know if that looks right. And then you, know, you could take a measurement on the actual model 
and like if it's a live model, you can actually just measure from there to there and go, oh, okay. And then measure your model and go, oh, yeah, I'm a little off there. You know, reel that in a little bit. And everything's looking pretty good. And once I have it kind of like uh, where I want it, then I'm good to go and start showing the butt. Now, typically, I would I wouldn't do the butt until like toward the end after I have all the model done. I have uh, not all the detail, but I have like all the basic shapes laid out where I have the, um, you can work in this, this kind of step-by-step -step stage too, but I would typically make it to where um, I would have like all the arms and legs attached, all the primitive shapes in place for the whole entire figure. And then I would, you know, mesh all that together. And then I would go in and start, um, you know, add the breast and the butt. And sometimes I like to add the butt last because what I'll do, not like last, last, but like, I don't want to make sure that I'm not remeshing too much. And so I like to try to put it on last. And what if you want like a really nice looking butt, it's a really good method. And then you just sculpt the cheeks and stuff, but you leave the middle, the crack, you leave that alone as two separate pieces. And um, anyway, it just gives you a nice looking separation of the butt there. Now from the side view here, you have the thigh, and the thigh kind of looks like it comes all the way up. Like with, if the butt was here, it kind of comes up like this, and you have this shape like that, boom. So you have this kind of shape where it kind of comes all the way up in here. And so this is part of the love handle and part of the hip. So the hip is more like right about here. That's where it sticks out. And then the love handle curves back. Remember I said it attaches here and it kind of comes out like this and attaches to the hip. It comes like this. And so you have this kind of indent. You can't really see it too much yet, but it'll be more visible later. It kind of comes in like this, comes out and like that. So it kind of has this shape like this. And the belly goes like this, like this, and like that, right? So it's kind of like a, a, an M shape. Again, boom, 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 like that. See that kind of M shape? We have this M shape all throughout the body. Your your upper lip has that M shape. If you think about the bottom of your breast, they have this M shape, you know, like that. The butt, it, the butt itself has that M shape, the bottom of the butt. Or like you can think about like, like the you know, bottom of the heart or the top of the heart, upside down. Anyway, yeah. And also you want to look at from this angle a lot. You want to make sure that the legs are coming up like this and then coming down like that a really angle right here this kind of makes a v shape right here like this make sure that's there and then you have this high peak right here for the rectus femoris and it comes out for this wide part here where the femur bone sticks out so you have again look at bam m a nice m shape and they want to make sure the hips kind of come up like this and kind of go up like that i'm looking for this kind of triangle shape as it goes back like this in space and then I'm also looking for this M shape again to the belly button like that. But I'm kind of looking for this shape right here as well. Boom, like that. It's not quite an M. It kind of goes up almost like a triangle. It comes up like that. So that shape right there, I don't know what to call that, but that's a shape I look for. And you want to make sure all these shapes are, are present in these different views. Because if they're not, then something's wrong. Now I'm looking to make sure the um, crotch coming to the back is correct. So I have this you know, pubic mound, which is right about here. And that comes in and creates that shape I talked about. And then I'm looking at it and making sure from this side here, I have the peak of the house right here. Boom, like that. And then the, the thighs are kind of covering part of the shape. So it kind of looks like an hourglass because of the, um, the thighs pushing into it. And then I have the buttocks, which are going to be here. I'm going to do a separate shape. I'm just kind of starting to show where they might be with a little bit of sculpting. And so that's all kind of looking good. I'm just kind of matching up to the model. Making sure everything's looking good. I'm liking it, so now I can bring in another shape for the butt. All right, so let's continue on here where we left off. So I have this sphere that I've appended. We just click on append and choose the sphere. It's really easy in ZBrush. I also show in Blender in my course how to create spheres, very simple. If you don't know how to use Blender yet, um, at least learn the basics of it. It's really easy. If you want to sculpt along, but you don't want to fork out the money for... Either way, even if you buy ZBrush, you have to learn how to use it. But in my course, I have an introdu introduction to Blender that's really easy to follow along. And it gives you all the tools you need to, to sculpt and do the course. Of course, it does so much more than that, but it gives you the basics. I might do something like that for... Um, I might add a video for ZBrush for those that want 
some just like over the quick overrun of the main things you need to know about ZBrush in order to you know sculpt this kind of stuff. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a, a free lesson on, for that and put it on YouTube and then I'll link it to it in the course. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of um, using the scale tool. And you can see it on this little doodad when you bring it up. You have these little squares right here. This is how you scale. This is how you move. You can also move by using this. But that moves it in 3D space everywhere. Um, and then you have, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So this is the scale. This is how you could scale the whole thing. But if you want to scale in one axis, it's this right here. If you hold down Alt, you can then move this doodad around without moving the object and, and get it to where you want it to be. And that way, when you scale, it'll scale in the direction you want. So if you want this arrow pointing out this way, because I want to scale in this direction, but it was like this direction, then you hold down the Alt key and just kind of rotate it, let go, and then you can grab this little square and you can move it out and scale in that direction. Just a little quick tip on how to use the little doodad in ZBrush. I'm just kind of getting it in place. I'm trying to get the shape as close as possible. This is the technique I use throughout the 3D anatomy course. Is get the shape as close as possible using the scale tool with the primitive shape. And only then um, start to actually sculpt. Now what's cool about ZBrush is you don't have to go back and forth between different modes. You just immediately start sculpting on it. Whereas in um, Blender you have to go to sculpt mode and then go back to you know um, whatever it's called I forget the two different modes there's like sculpt mode and then there's the object mode or something so you have to like go back and forth between those modes to do this but in, in ZBrush it's all in the same mode so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm pulling from this angle I'm pulling down this shape because it's going to go like this because remember that fat pad I talked about here I'm not dealing with the fact that it rolls around and attaches into that crotch area but now I'm just focusing on this shape right here and remember, I know it's going to go down further than the crotch, which we'll, we'll handle in a second. I'm just getting this shape. So we want to kind of um, get the shapes from the front and side view, correct? And then you can start looking at other angles. So now I'm looking at different angles, making sure that it's all working right. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, making sure it kind of fits the shape I want. And so typically it looks like this. It kind of it kind of wraps up like this a little bit. There's a little bit of angle here, which creates the butt crack. It goes like this. Sometimes it go up higher, you know, but it has a slight angle to it. And then it, and it, and it kind of flats out, but it reaches the, the peak right about here. And then it r quickly goes like this, and it, it'll just like fall off right into the thigh. It'll just, and there, won't, there won't be like a, a separation like this. So eventually we'll fill that in with clay. And so from this angle, you'll have this kind of M shape like this. Boom. You have to imagine the other side. That's one thing I don't know how to do yet in ZBrush. I, I, I never even looked at how, if it's even possible. But when you're working in Blender, it's really awesome. So you have this uh, modifier you can add, a mirror modifier. What the mirror modifier does is it kind of mirrors over the object to the other side, but it's not actually there. It's not sculptable, right? You, you just sculpt on this side, and then this, you, know, you can see what will be on the other side. It just really helps kind of get a good visual of how everything's going to look when there actually are two there. And then when you apply the modifier, then you have actually two objects you can sculpt on. But uh, yeah, so. Now this is actually a normal uh, youthful shape that you would have. Like it kind of, there's less fat here. So it kind of follows the muscle. Because remember the butt muscle goes like this, it goes like, and it comes across like this and it attaches over here to the side of the leg. So it kind of goes like that. And then this is just a little bit of extra fat here. So this is what like a fit person would look like with very little fat. They don't have much fat built up here, but the person we're doing has more fat build up. And again, if you want to learn the anatomy of, of all this, I recommend to take my course. 3D Anatomy, masterpaynow.com, links in the description. I'm pulling this part down with the move tool. See that? Bam. This is true for everyone. Right? Even if you have this shape I have already there, there's not that much fat here, there's going to be a little bit of skin and fat that come and attach all the way to here. This is true for everybody. So make sure to do this. And by pulling that three-dimensional shape down, I have my butt wrap in and come underneath. Like I'm, I'm really stressing this because it's so important that this is correct. Because like, I mean, if you don't get this correct, you leave it without this part here, then from the back view it looks fine. But then if you look at any other view, like you're looking, you know, like if the person is going to, if you animate the body, the person bends over, something's not going to look right. And that's why, because that piece of fat is missing. Or if you're trying to do like a really nice sculpture and, and, you know, and people can, you know, print the 3D model or something. And then they look at it from that angle, the up angle, they're like, something doesn't feel right here. They, want, they might not know why. 
but they're going to feel that it's not right. They're going to like they're they're, they're going to think, oh, this isn't good. That's what they're going to think, just from that one little mistake. So make sure to make them feel uneasy if anything. So just make sure that's right. It's a minor detail, but it's an important detail. And there I'm adding clay, just kind of bulking up that fatty area more, because this model has a lot more fat in that area than let's say a really fit thinner person would. Now I'm just kind of I, I eyeballed it, everything was looking great, but now I'm, I want to make sure I'm really accurate to this model. Because I want to show if I'm totally accurate to this model here. Now, I don't, you know, like if you, th you feel like this is cheating, I already had the, the basic idea was already there. It was very close by eyeballing it. But I'm trying to get as accurate as possible. So now I'm going in and just doing very little micro adjustments to make sure I want to show what this butt piece looks like when it's co totally accurate to the model. Right, so that's what the that's what the butt piece looks like. Notice how it wraps around. Think about this as like a water water sack, and it's like kind of a, not a water balloon, kind of like a water sack, like a um, a sandwich bag or something filled with water, right? But not too much water, and so it can easily like wrap around stuff. And if you were just to lay that on top of the sphere here, or not a sphere, but a, um, a soda can, on top of something that's rounded like this, like a cylinder, is the word I was looking for. If you lay this on top of a cylinder, what would happen? Well, the bag is is straight like this, but because of gravity and because it's water, it's going to pull and it's going to it's going to lay on top of it. It's going to wrap around. Like if you take a you know a water bag, take a Ziploc bag, fill fill with some water, and and lay it on top of your arm, you're going to see it it wraps around your arm, right? So this is wrapping around. Same thing with the breast. When as the breasts fit on the rib cage, they wrap around the rib cage. So it's really important to have that wrapping around effect. And knowing this can really help in drawing. But anyway, just make sure that's right. And once you have a, a nice butt piece made, you can actually save that and use it as a universal thing. If you get into sculpting it with this method where you kind of don't sculpt the butt on, or just kind of lightly sculpt the butt on, then you can have these butt pieces saved as separate items that you can append in and you can place it onto the model you're working on. So you don't have to sculpt it every single time. You can kind of adjust it, like especially if you're trying to go for a likeness. You can take that generic butt piece or even thin it out more so the default is maybe more thin. And then you can add a little bit more fat if you need to to fit the model. So maybe make this more of like a... I don't want to say... Ideal, that's the wrong word, because this might be ideal, right? Ideal subjective. What I mean is maybe make it more of someone that would be like 15% body fat or something, a thinner person. And in other words, I would just take away some of the fat here. And then you'd save that piece. You can even save two pieces. Save one that's more thicker and fatter. Save one that's more fitter. Save these butt pieces. Name them whatever. And then when you need them, you, can just, you don't have to sculpt them all the time, every single time. You can just pop them in and then reshape them a little bit, and that saves a lot of time. You can do the same thing for breast pieces, and it just saves a lot of time, um, especially if you're doing it for a job. You want to save as much time as possible. You'll have a base model that you work off of. You won't be sculpting from scratch every time, that's for sure. But you definitely want to do that once in a while. Even if you get a job and you start working from a base mesh, and you can make these, you, every once in a while, you want to make sure you keep your skills up, right? And sculpt from scratch just to make sure you don't lose it and so if you do have these pieces saved every now and again maybe sculpt from scratch so you don't lose the ability to sculpt a nice butt cheek all right so um here we're just adding another another thing now this is typically what i would do and you can do either method right so you can either use this method where you kind of work as you go so you kind of finesse it to just this level you don't want to go over like 300 320 or so on the DynaMesh. Now in Blender, I don't know what that what that works out to, but I forget. But you'll you'll kind of get the feeling for when you're when you're remeshing, like what what number you want to remesh. I think it's like 0.5 or something on Blender is where you want to be at for the, for the whole body. Anyway, um, as you're working on this first part, you can kind of get a lot of the detailed anatomy out and go, okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to make the next part of the body. I'm going to add on the calves now, and then you know, and then you want to. Put you know merge those together, then re mesh and then kind of start sculpting the anatomy on that, blend it together and sculpt the anatomy like like, like this method right here. But another method you can do is you can just start from all the base pieces, so you can make a figure, put all the base pieces into place, and then 
and then merge them all together, Dynamesh, and then start adding the anatomy that way. So either way works. Sometimes working this way just feels more interesting. It, like, I don't know, less boring. Because sometimes, like, having to put all the pieces together and everything gets kind of boring. And that's why a lot, oftentimes, if anything, you might have a base model like that made of, like, have a model made of basic pieces that are not, like, a, a file with the basic pieces that are in place, but they're not actually um, fused together yet. You haven't merged them together yet. And then you can match that up with any model and then just kind of rearrange the pieces to kind of match the, you know, the proportions of the model you're working with and then merge them together and then, and then sculpt. And that saves a lot of time. But if you want to like do it from scratch like I am, I feel like doing this method just makes time go by faster. It makes the, the whole experience more enjoyable because you're not spending all that time making this like three-dimensional model with primitives. And then, but this, this way you just do one piece at a time anyway. Hopefully that makes sense. Just you'll get you'll you'll get a feel for what you what you enjoy more. But I usually enjoy this more. So this is the other model. Uh, this one here cost me. It came with a pack with like a couple versions of her, a couple different poses of her, and uh, it's a pretty high quality scan. Not as high as I thought it would be though. Like the detail up close is okay. I thought it was gonna be a much higher resolution, but I've only tried the OBJ so far. So maybe the other file types it comes with are higher resolution. I'll have to check that out. But anyway, it costed quite a quite a bit of money. It's like sixty bucks or something just for her, and the other one, the other one was like twenty bucks. So overall, I spent like I don't know seventy seven eighty bucks. I can't remember. They they charged in European, and so I, I'm pretty sure it came about it came about that to American. Anyway, so they're quite expensive um, if you want to get good, you know, three D scans of of people. So just keep that in mind. But I'm gonna offer mine which is based on a 3D scan. So I'm going to, you know, get it really close and I'm going to do a new head because the head I have is just a placeholder head that but I'm going to sculpt it into a nice looking head and face. And I think I might offer it for like five bucks or something. So it's not going to have like any, um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll even do basic painting on it. I don't know, but either way, it'll just be like the model to look at and stuff and like a good model to start from. And I might go ahead and offer that as part of this. So if you want to, go and buy the model because you want to like work based off of it. You can either go buy this original model or you can buy mine for much cheaper, which is just like a, my own version of it, basically my own sculpting of it. Mine would be super cheap, like three to five bucks or something. Whereas there's this, you know, um, for that, for this base model right here, I think was uh, $13 on sale for European, which works out to about 20 American. Let me show you the site though, just in case you're interested in buying, buying from them. I'll go. It's, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. So this is what it's called. It's called the 3D Scan Store. It's actually hard to find um, good quality 3D scans for a decent price. And if you go to the base mesh right here, go to base meshes. I know you can't see the whole site because I don't have the whole screen recorded right now. And the one I got, if you go, oh, it can't see it, but there's a, a there's a sort a sort by drop down menu, sort by low to high. And this model over here on the left. So you can also, and you can also, there's a, this one here comes with both. It's on sale right now for 23 American. Or not, that's a European. I think that comes out to like almost $30 American. So maybe a little bit more than that. So that has both the male and the female. It's a, it's a better price than buying them separately. Um, and then they have the ones that are, you know, that have a full scanning of the actual texture as well. If you wanted the realistic texture for some reason, I didn't need that. So I just bought this cheap one over here. You can't see it, but it's the same price as him. It's, it's 13 which I think works out to about $20 American, something like that. And so, yeah, anyway, it's a good model. And she, the, what, what you're going to want to bring in, though, if you want a higher resolution, the OBJ is pretty low resolution. All the other file types are pretty low resolution. You want the decimate one. If you bring in the decimate version, that's um, more higher resolution. It's still not super high resolution, but it's more higher resolution. Um, I think I might actually make mine much higher resolution, and so it might be a slightly bigger download, but it'll be a a, a better version, whatever. And we'll see. Let me know what you think, um, whether you would buy the model for three to five bucks. You're saving money if you versus buying this one, and it's pretty much exactly the same because I'm modeling it based on that. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back to what we're doing here. So um, 
again, if you feel like this is cheating, I'm just kind of getting the basic shape. And that's all this does. This gives you this the basic shape. You still have to do all the sculpting. You have to like sculpt all the muscle and everything onto all the detail and everything, which isn't easy. But if you feel like it's cheating, I see that like, doesn't look much like a leg, right? So I still have to sculpt all that. But if you feel like that's cheating and you don't want to do it that way, again, all you have to do is just put the shape there. Go based on how you know the calf's supposed to look. Look at um, you know a model that you have a couple views up of, the front view, side view mainly. And kind of look at that and just kind of sculpt it to where it kind of fits into what you're going for. And then do a couple measurements just to make sure that it's matching. If you want it to match the likeness of a model, then do some measurements. You want to measure, you know, the wideness of the calf in the front view, the wideness of the calf in the side view. You don't want to measure like the knee. You want to measure the ankle, you know, maybe measure from here to here. Just make sure everything is kind of matching what your what your the end result you're kind of going for. And, and again, all the masters did this, right? They, they took all kinds of measurements as they were sculpting. Or sometimes they would do all the measurements ahead of time, and then they would work from their imagination. So a really good sculptor, like I can sculpt from my imagination. There's a lot of sculptors, sculpt, excuse me, sculptings I've done just for fun, completely from my mind, and they come out pretty good. But to add that like final bit of detail, you want a model, right? So what a lot of these guys would do is they would take all the measurements, they would have the person come in, they would take all the measurements, they do some sketching, some sketches of the pose they wanted to do. And then they can have them go away and they would, um, you know, do the basic sculpting from their imagination based on those measurements and stuff, make sure it's kind of fit it, fitting in the proper proportions and stuff. And then when they were getting close to being done, they had the person come back and sit, sit in again, and then they would add those final details. And that, that method works great. Anyway, the point is that measurements are super important if you want to achieve a likeness. This includes the face. There's so many measurements on the face you want to take. Okay, now I'm going to show a trick on how to do this in... And ZBrush, this is the only way I know how to do this in ZBrush right now. If there is a way to, um, there might be a way using, I think there's a, uh, I, know, I should look it up. I bet you there's a way to do this. It's got to be a way. Why would they not have a way to do this, right? There, there must be some way to, to see in real time what you're doing without committing to that other shape yet. We can work on one shape and it kind of shows you the mirrored shape in real time. There's got to be an option for that. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm sure there's some option to do that. I was thinking it might be under morph target. I don't know. Like morph target and then put it over and then I don't know. I'm sure there's a way to do it though. If you already know how to do it, I'm sure you're going to you're going to type it in the deck, so. So what I'm looking for here is under geometry, that right here under morph, so under geometry there's a uh, called modify topology, mirror and and uh, weld is what you want to use. Now, now I'm looking at the back view. So this is actually the left leg, by the way. I know it looks like the right leg. Well, I mean, excuse me, it is the right leg, but I meant it's on the left side if you're viewing it from the front view. And so I believe mirror and weld welds the right side to the left side. I think that's how it works. And so for some reason, you hit mirror and weld and nothing happens. You want to go down here to, um, I think it's called like deform or something like that. I mean, actually, let's, let's see, because I have ZBrush open. You want to go down here to deformation. So you want to open deformation. And you can't see all of this, but there's this thing called mirror. And that will mirror the character over. You can see the head's kind of switching there. And then when you hit, then hit the, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Then hit the uh, mirror and weld and it will work. Okay, so we can mirror and weld this over. Once we have the piece right, we can mirror and weld. And if it doesn't quite look right, then you can always, you know, just undo and then move the piece around. But we kind of like, this looks good. This looks good. This is what we want right here. And then we can, you know, merge the layers together and then read, you know, dynamesh it again at, at um, probably a higher resolution now. Like once you, that's why I like to add the butt last because once you add the butt, you really have to go high, high resolution for the um, dynamesh, like 800 or so. Maybe even a thousand. And so keep that in mind. You might want to just put the butt there in place, leave it there, and then don't work on it until you have the whole model kind of done. Or you've or you brought yourself up to that kind. But also if you leave it on like this and then dynamesh it at the end, and then you just kind of blend out this part right here, blend out this edge and this of just a little bit right here, so it kind of flows into the um add some clay here so it kind of flows into the thigh, which we'll do, and leave this unsculpted, you'll have this nice butt crack that like looks perfect. And people wonder, how did he sculpt that? 
but I don't do that method here. I'll show you another method. So I'm just kind of making sure all the proportions are right and kind of matching. And again, if you feel like that's cheating, it's, it's fine. I just wanted to make sure this model is as close as possible to the original. But if you feel like that's cheating, that's fine. You can always just take measurements, like I said, and work work from references. So like, for example, you can, if you're working in ZBrush, you can uh, open her up in, let's say, your model reference in Blender and then have a couple different um, modes you can see the model in. Different viewports, you know, like front view, side view, three quarters of view or something. What I'm doing here is I'm showing, um, what am I doing actually? I, don't, I can't remember what I was doing here. I'll tell you in a second, once I remember. I think I was trying to figure out why it wouldn't let me disappear just one leg. And I honestly, I can't remember why. Now, I think, I think it's because maybe I had, I don't think I had dynamic, maybe it was a, I don't know, I had to clear the mask, or maybe it was a, something was blocking it from, from doing it. Because when you select one leg, it should just disappear that leg and not both of them. And I think it was doing both of them, maybe because I, I had dynamic, I had a dynamic thing set on. Like I had, um, I don't know, something like that. I can't remember what it was now. But I think it was either I had a, a mesh that was not totally cleared or a mask that wasn't totally cleared somewhere. Or I'm trying to think. Or under um, geometry, I had the subdivision on or something. I had to like delete it. I don't think I had subdivision on yet, though. So I, don't, I can't remember what, why I was doing that. But I, I ended up figuring it out. But honestly, I can't remember what it was. Because I don't even think I was recording when I ended up figuring it out. So right here, I'm just kind of bulking up the calf there. And I end up. I end up deviating from the model in my final version a little bit because I wanted her to have nicer looking calves. That is, the model has okay calves, but I just wanted like sexier legs, so I just kind of deviated a little bit and made them a little more muscular and a little bit more uh, what I would consider. Beep! 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 And so this here, um, Although this wasn't done for imagination, this was done without any sort of measuring at all. So I had some photo references of different, um, you know, I did my own pose. And then I had a couple references of, uh, like I had no reference for this pose. This was, so the pose is from my imagination. I didn't have anything to look at for the pose. And I just had some references for how he looks in general, like to get the face right and stuff and like what his body type is and things like that. But everything else, you know, I have to like really kind of work for imagination. And I didn't do any measuring. There was no measuring I could do. Um, I just literally just went, it's just based on what I can see. It's like, okay, I can see, and this is a different model. And here's this model again. And I, I found like one photo where some guy's arm is kind of up in some similar position, but not quite the same, just to kind of get some idea of how, how the bicep would look. So I get some reference for that. But I couldn't do any measuring, right? Because there's no like, there's no 3D body to measure. Now, if you just have photos, you can kind of measure some things, you know, like you have to make sure that what, what you're measuring is not being distorted. You know, there's no, there's no perspective going on. Like the arm isn't coming out toward us like this because that wouldn't give you, that wouldn't give you accurate uh, data to measure from. And this is a different one I did. You know, there's one, one picture of him I can't show because I actually did his junk and I probably shouldn't show that on YouTube. But uh, this is just, I did this one in Blender, and it's based on some other version, uh, some guy's video that he worked in clay and did kind of some similar pose of, of um, Hellboy, except I did him not as muscular, not as big. So this one's a more like realistic, natural looking Hellboy person. And then Blender just does an okay job. I just kind of did some basic uh, render painting on him. All right, let's go ahead and continue back on the course, though. We're getting, getting sidetracked here. Not the course, but the free lesson that I'm offering here. And so here I'm, I'm paying attention to those muscles in the back and how they kind of form on there. And I'm kind of, I just, I, I often do this. I kind of just bounce around. I get bored with something like, okay, that looks good enough for now. And I kind of bounce around other places. 
And, and remember, this was mainly for a... Uh, I wanted to make sure I had that crease there, and then I had this kind of indent right here still. I don't even bother looking at the, um, me you know, measuring up to the actual model at this point. I just, I'm like, ah, I think that's pretty much right. Make sure you add these back muscles here. These back muscles are important. They're, they're surface muscles. They lie, not surface, they're, they're, um, they're inner muscles. They lie underneath the, um, the latissimus, but um, they, they're visible. They poke through it because the latissimus, especially in that area, is just the tendon, and the tendon is a very thin sheet of material. Right now the belly is sticking out quite far. I, I was I wanted to um, I was kind of messing around with that because some girls have that kind of pooch and I think it's kind of sexy. But I was like I don't know if I want to want it there or not. But anyway, so right here you have the um, rib cage coming out. Then you have the dominum, dominal muscles kind of coming in here, and you have this is the dominal muscle right there, right? But then look at the hip. The hip kind of comes out and kind of in, see this indent. I'm going to increase that more. This is going to come up here, and this is indent. So I'm going to increase a little bit more like that. And this is the leg so the leg kind of the butt kind of rolls into the shape right here kind of comes up like that that's part of the love handle so the, imagine the love handle is kind of coming out and coming to wrap around to the butt like this boom we have this this nice shape like that and then it kind of indents right here and then kind of comes in and then comes out again for the leg really important for the side view to get that right because when that's not right something doesn't look right from other views especially the three-quarter view one it won't look right from the side view now I'm just kind of matching up the model, just making sure I'm getting it close to the model. So I want it to be accurate to the model as possible. Again, there's slower, slower ways to do that. I could, you know, take measure measurements of it and match up with primitives and stuff like that, and then and then work the rest from just eye eyeballing it. And so here I go ahead and I attach the butt. So normally I wouldn't do it at this stage, but I can show you how to do it this way too. So you smooth it all in. You want, I'm down to mesh at about 500. I probably should be more. I probably should have been a little bit higher than that, like 800. But I didn't want it to be that high yet. So that's why it's good to do the butt last, to attach it last. But I can carve in with the um, damp standard brush here to get that butt crack in there. And then you can kind of just um, push it together a little bit with the move tool. And maybe even use the pinch tool and just kind of pinch it together a little bit, which is what I end up doing. Damp standard again to kind of just crease that. And that's looking good. And so you can see that it looks it looks unnatural because the it shouldn't be like a separation. It shouldn't look like it, this should look like flesh just rounding into the thigh, right? So I need to cover all this up so that there's a nice smooth roundness there from the butt to the thigh, looking like it's just one shape. And all we do is add some clay strips. If you're working with physical clay, you would literally just smash some clay strips. That's why it's called the clay strip brush because like when you're working with physical clay. You'd often have like these little clay strips built ahead of time, especially if you're working big. And then you would just grab a clay strip and you, you would slap it on where you need some clay. Um, or if you're working smaller, you would just kind of pinch some clay off between your fingers and then kind of, you know, lay that little, lay little pieces at a time. We want to make sure I emphasize that, that piece there. Carved in that butt cheek. This is the pinch tool, so you can kind of just pinch it together. See how that works? That works pretty good. So you kind of get like that, you know, two different pieces that are pushed together and there's like actual separation between them. Adding some more clay strips to the side there. So that it, adding some more to the belly. Adding a little bit, just adding a little stuff here and there as I'm looking around and seeing stuff. And at this point now, I think I decided to open up the model in Blender on my other monitor so I can kind of look at it from different angles and make sure that um, I'm getting all the details right. And then I'm, I'm just using this to match up and make sure that the proportions are right. That's all I'm using it for, just for the proportions. I'm not using this for details. That would just be ridiculous. That would take too long going back and forth. So I use another monitor for the details. So what this is kind of similar to is if you were to trace a photo, like let's say you wanted to paint a portrait or even draw a, a realistic portrait, and you trace the basic shape. So you trace the outline of the eyes, like where the nose is, and the kind of shape of the nose, the lips, the ears, the overall shape of the face. All the proportions would be correct. But everything else you have to do by looking, right? 
can't, there's no more measurements you can really do. I, mean, I guess you can measure like where the highlight kind of is or where the shadow kind of is. Um, but suppose that's all you did. And so you have all the proportions, right? So you know that, hey, if I can nail everything else right, this is going to look good. But now you have to do like all the hard work, which is translating all that 3D information in 2D, like where the highlights and the shadows and the form, uh, how, you know, you have to create all the form and the likeness. And that's quite difficult. And that you're doing by looking. You look and think about what's there and then you start painting, right? And so now you, know, you have to get all that correct. And that's the hard part. So even if like, you might think that's cheating, but a lot of great artists did that in the past. Um, they had projectors, right? And they would project the image onto the canvas and they would just, you know, lightly trace where all the main, main forms were, like where the eyes were going to be, the nose, the mouth, all those main shapes were correct and in their proper places. And then they would go and start adding the paint in. So, Yeah. But some people feel like, well, maybe that's cheating. But trust me, try it yourself. You're not a good painter. You're just starting out. Try tracing all the basic idea, you know, trace all the um, the main things that the, so the perspective is right, and then try to paint everything in or try to draw everything in and make it look like a nice, realistic drawing. And it's like you're going to realize tracing doesn't get you that far, right? <laughs> you have to do all the hard work still. And so you can kind of think about this like kind of like tracing, but not really. Like it's kind of giving you the basic, the basic shapes. Now all I did here is I I just grabbed the move tool. Let me go back here because I think I was talking, just kind of went pa went past this part here. So I kind of just pull out this with the move tool, just kind of pull it out like this a little bit, and that's good. And then kind of pull it from each side here just to make sure it's the right thickness. And just kind of matching it. Her arms are kind of back, so I kind of I kind of making it to where. It's kind of going back in space a little bit. And there you go. That's all you need. That's the basic shape. So you want to start with that, you know, kind of egg shape. Then you just pull out the shoulders a little bit. And then the other part that fits onto this will be the arms themselves, which will be cylinders. So this is all you do for the torso. And then you can pull the neck out, which I'll show you how to do. What I like to do, though, is once I have that shape, is I like to um, create the armpit. But we're not going to do that yet because, remember, this was... Originally recording for a butt tutorial, so I want to make sure I get all this right. I was just adding some other details so the context made sense. So I'm adding that crease. I'm kind of creasing with the damp standard brush. You can use the crease brush in, uh, in Blender or the draw sharp brush. Both of those will work. And okay, that looks looking pretty good. Just kind of measuring it up, making sure everything is working out right still. And how you do that with a live model is you would just you would go back to your measurements that you probably already wrote down, or you can just remeasure the person again, but that just takes longer. If you already have the measurements written down and you know what they stand for, like what, you know, like you have certain measurements you get used to taking and you have like notes or whatever, like little shorthand that you know to remember. And then you just take that number. Let's say it was like 36 inches, or whatever. And then you would, you know, and then you have that, you do the math, divide that by five, whatever. Cause you say you're doing one fifth scale model or whatever. And then you would, uh, take that number, whatever it was, let's say, I don't know, it was five inches, whatever. I don't know if that's right, but you would take that and then um, you would measure it again to make sure that it's still five inches. And if it's like a little bit bigger, you would just kind of shave some clay off. Or if somehow you got thinner, you would add a little bit of clay back. So you're like, you're looking at it, but you're also constantly retaking measurements. What I like to do here is I like to just take clay away. So I'm just using the clay strip and just pulling clay away, get a shape kind of like that. And I'm just kind of making sure all this is matching up. Again, this would be like as if I'm just remeasuring and then adjusting based on that. And that's looking good. So that's about where you want to be as far as before you add the arms on. You want something about like this. Let's go ahead and get to the next, the next stage going. So when using Camtasia, I pretty much only, I try to record no more than an hour at a time. I try to keep it around 40 minutes at a time. One, it makes it easier for me to do this part here. Um, but that was like an hour and hour and 20 minutes. This one is 48 minutes. I try to keep it right around an hour. Um, or even like I said, at 40 minutes or so, because what happens is if you kind of go over an hour with Camtasia, sometimes it will not match the audio. But in this case, I don't really care because I don't need the audio, but sometimes you'll still get weird issues. And also it makes it harder when I want to come back and re re replay it. My little handle to move to move around gets really tiny and just makes it more difficult. So what I'm adding there is that little crease. I'm just kind of 
using the, the damp standard to kind of recrease that. I want to make sure because I keep I keep losing this crease here when I whenever I uh, remesh or whatever, and so I'm just adding it back, and I will probably have to add it back again because I had to keep dynameshing again anyway. But I was just kind of showing for the tutorial. I, I wouldn't actually do that for real. I would just leave it the way it was, and then I would come back. I was experimenting with um, fat there. Adding those dimples back. Just kind of changing the shape of the butt here a little bit. I want it to like look the way I want it to look. Like I said, I'm going to deviate from the model a little bit at some point. And so here, all you do is append. You just hit the append tool or the append button under subtool here. So subtool, then there's this append. Hit the append and it brings up a little menu and then you just choose the uh, cylinder. If you're in Blender, just go to, you know, add shape, whatever, add cylinder. I then put it into place first using the uh, move tool and the scale tool, kind of get it to where it needs to be. In this case, it's actually good to just have the model there to get the shape you want exactly. Now, again, if you feel like this is cheating, I really recommend, though, your first couple sculptor, sculptings, you should definitely use this method. Um, but then like, if you want to move away from that and kind of go more by, by visual cues and stuff, then you can just look at your model from different angles and then just kind of make sure that you know your cylinder is kind of matching up where it's supposed to be to match the pose. You can also take some basic measurements, you know, like how far is the arm away from here. So take a measurement from here to here. That gives you a good measurement to go by. So as you place it in and eyeball it, you can then measure and go, okay, that, I'm a little bit off, and then just kind of go based on that measurement. Uh, you can also do a measurement from like, you know, the collarbone out to the edge here to just make sure that it's the proper wideness, um, things like that. So measure the arm itself also. Then I dynamesh it, and I'm going to bring it up right away to like 400 because I know if I try to smooth it out, any less than that, it's just going to eat away. So in order to maintain the shape, I have to work at about 400. And for this shape, uh, for this size of shape, 400 is about, about right. And then when I add it onto the model, it'll be about, I'll, I'll remesh the whole thing at about, I've been working at 500. So I think I'll be remeshing at 500, I think. At some point I move up to like 800, 900. Especially when you start doing hands and stuff. In this tutorial, I'm actually not gonna go through the hands. I do go through hands and feet, obviously, in the anatomy course, but I might do a free tutorial on just some tips and stuff on doing hands that, if you guys want, let me know if you guys want a video on that. It, I'm telling you, it really helps when drawing, too. So so now um, I'm looking at the, you know, the spheres as reference here, just to make sure, like, everything looks like it's fitting into place based on the spheres that I had there. This is all you do. It's really easy to do a neck. You just take your um, mask tool. You mask it out. You can do this in Blender too. You just mask it out, reverse the mask, and then you just uh, use the move tool and, and pull it up. And in Blender, you have to use, I think, the snake tool. But in this case, you use this little doodad. And I use the alt key, right? You move this with the alt key so that it not, doesn't move anything. Rotate it with the alt key held down. Let go of the alt key and then just move it up. And bam, we got an insto neck. So a really easy way. You can also do that to pull out arms and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm just kind of using the move tool, and then I'm using the clay brush to add some muscles in there. You can see the geometry is a little bit weird. That's because we haven't remeshed yet. So I'm, I'm adding the arm. I'm doing the um, mirror and the mirror and weld, and then I will merge the layers together, and then I'm going to dynamesh at like 728, so close to 800. You can put exactly 800 if you want to type the number in. I just pulled it close enough to 800. Adding the collarbones. Remember, the collarbones um, kind of look like a bicycle handlebar or like an S-curve. They kind of go like this, kind of come straight, curves, and then come straight again. So it has this kind of S-curve. You can actually look at a collarbone, like look up an actual human collarbone. You can see it has that S-curve to it. Adding in the... Um, sternocleidomastoid muscles. These are the muscles that attach to basically this inner part of the collarbone, and they come up and go to the back of the ear. They attach to the skull behind the ear. And then another little part of it, there's actually uh, two branches, one that attaches here and one that attaches like right here. I don't worry about that other piece right now. Sometimes it looks like two different tendons, but it's part of the same muscle. Use the move tool. I just kind of pulled up the uh, 
My brain brain's not thinking. Okay, think brain. This kite shaped muscle. <laughs> the trap the trapezius muscle. I don't know why my brain wasn't remembering that. So it kind of looks like a kite. Kind of comes up to the top of the neck at a point right here. Kind of comes down like this. Attaches from the backside comes like this, and then it comes down like that. So it kind of has this kite shape or like diamond shape. Diamond as in the diamonds on a deck of cards, the red diamond. And it, it, it actually flows and it connects forward from the front side. It attaches to the front of the collarbone. So it attaches here along the scapula, but then it also attaches um, onto the top of the collarbone. So it kind of loops around. I could throw all this in my anatomy course. I'm just adding some very, very basic shapes. This is a really important shape. I always add this, this V right here. It, it usually always shows up uh, on men and women. And it doesn't really have anything to do with like the underlying muscle anatomy. So the muscle anatomy is like you have the uh, latissimus dorsi, which connects right about here. It kind of overlaps part of the um, trapezius muscle that connects down here. And it comes, wraps up like this and comes up and attaches here to the inside of the um, humerus bone. And it kind of free flows off the rib cage and it goes over here. And then it kind of comes down like that. And that's what gives you that kind of wing muscle when you build it up. And then it kind of comes down like this and attaches across here and then right here. So it kind of goes, this is all, but what, what's important here is all this is tendon, right? So that's kind of what creates a shape is you have the muscle part, which goes like this. All this right here is the muscle part. This is all the tendon, right? So all this right here is like the tendon part. If you look at a good anatomy book, this will all be like a whiter color. And then the rest of the latissimus dorsi will be red. That's because all this is tendon. It's very thin. And that's why you can see these muscles, these two muscles underneath poking through. And that's what creates this kind of this kind of line. It's the separation between the tendon and where the muscle starts to bulk up. So when the muscle starts to bulk up right here, you, and then also with the fat tissue, how the fat builds up is such the woman, you can see the fat kind of just roll right into this usually. And yeah, so anyway, I can show some examples. You can just look up some like backs and see what I'm talking about. So I always add that. And then right here, you need to um, add some clay because now you have, you know, fat tissue and stuff and muscles. You have the, um, well, I'm not going to get into all of them, but you have the trapezius muscle it connects to the top part of the scapula comes and wraps over, covers the corner of the scapula and comes down. Then you have these three muscles in here. Um, well, you have the latissimus dorsi that comes like this. And then you have these three muscles in here that connect over here as well. And that are, are on the inside of the scapula. We have the, um, you have the terrace major and the terrace minor. Major, mainly it's the terrace major that you see because the terrace major goes and attaches pretty much to the same inner part of the humerus bone as the latissimus dorsi does. And then you have the inferspinitis, spinitis, which is like right here, is like this bigger kind of muscle. Anyway, it creates, and there's all this fat and tissue that sets on top of this, and so that's what creates this. You need to fill that in. Anyway, that's the point. I added some of those um, vertebrae there. You can't, always, you can't always see them poking through, but I decided I want to kind of just add where they are. And you have this kind of like empty triangle space here with the trapezius muscle, which is why you can sometimes see that poking through. And so I'm not going to super detail yet. And notice how that really set me up for, for success here by having that little indent there. Um, and what creates the armpit is actually the pectoral muscle. It, it, it attaches to the part of the half of the collarbone here, attaches across the sternum, across some of the sixth and seventh rib. And then it just kind of floats across the rib cage and it floats in space and attaches to this upper inner part of the of the arm here like boom like that kind of like underneath underneath the deltoid right so the deltoid comes down about half of this part of the arm and about halfway into the deltoid that's where the pectoral pectoralis kind of comes in and attaches and on the other side you have the latissimus dorsi and so in between on the rib cage you have the latissimus dorsi and the pectoral muscles and it creates this little indent because they're floating off the rib cage and it creates that little cave between those two muscles. Just kind of looking back and forth, making sure it's a matchup for the model still. I just want to make sure I'm not losing my way because I haven't been looking at the model much anymore. I mean, I, like, I, mean, I haven't been matching it up to the model much anymore. I'm just kind of going based on my other monitor. So I'm kind of looking at the model in different angles on Blender to make sure everything's kind of matching up now. So what I like to do here is I like to just kind of sketch in the basic idea of the pectoralis. So, like I said, it, I know it comes and it goes underneath about the halfway point point of the um, a deltoid, 
it takes up this first half of the collarbone. The deltoid comes and attaches to the second half of the collarbone. And by the way, the trapezius muscle comes all the way around and it connects to like almost the same, not quite to the halfway mark as the uh, deltoid, but pretty close. Band like that. So it comes, wraps forward. And that's what creates this like hole in here. Bunch of stuff that I talk about in the anatomy course in more detail. The 3D anatomy course. So having this proper rib cage is really good and the proper kind of pectoral muscles there because women have the same muscles as men. They're not different. The only thing that's different is they don't attach in different spaces. Like it's all the same. Like obviously the rib cage is a little bit smaller and stuff and the muscles are smaller, but they attach in the same places. If you learn anatomy, it's the same for man and woman as far as the muscles and where they go and where they attach. What makes the woman look so different is that she has the fat tissues, the, the, the glands, all those glands and fat tissue that create the breast that attach onto the pectoral muscle. So what I do for the, I, I redo the belly button several times, but I use the damp standard usually and I kind of carve out a nice shape and I use, I, I take some clay away right here and then I add a little bit of clay up here and that's usually enough to create the belly button with pretty high detail. I'm adding a lot of detail here that I normally wouldn't do at this stage, but it's kind of fun to kind of work this way where you just, I'm not adding too much detail that's going to be destroyed by, by dynameshing. But I like to kind of uh, work like this, where I'm just kind of doing different things at different stages. I'm kind of like, oh, I want to add some more detail here. I just noticed some stuff doesn't quite look right. And then, then go back and add some detail to the arm and stuff like that. Notice that she's built enough that you can see her collarbone kind of sticking out from the arm. And so I made sure to add that. And you have this um, one thing to keep in mind. So about... If you take your hand and you place it right here, your fingers right here, or you're grabbing right here with your fingers, you can fit about three to four fingers right here between the shoulder and where the breast will actually start. So just remember, there's this flat area here that's not breast. This is your pectoralis muscle. And the breast fits on top. And I'll show you what that looks like when you add the breast. And I, and I, have, I go into kind of more detail also about this in my uh, How to Sculpt Breast free lesson on YouTube. Right there, see that See that move right there? So I noticed that this wasn't um, quite right. So you have this, you know, this muscle coming out here. So you have the rectus femoris popping out, that's right. And then you have it kind of indenting in a little bit right here. And then you have the part of the hip, hip bone that pu pushes out right here. And then this is the love handle. The love handle should go back more like this because it's kind of coming back to the um, rib cage, to the side of the rib cage. So there should be a bigger indent right here. And I'm like, that doesn't look right, so I need to push that in. So I take my move tool, look at that. I just push that in just a little bit. The move tool, the move tool is so important. So the move tool is kind of like using your thumb when you're working with clay and you kind of just push stuff around sometimes. Or your palm or whatever if you're, if you're working with a bigger model. I, I, I don't know why I did this. I, I, I thought I was going to add, I just kind of showing where they're at, and I was going to add them. But I'm like, you know what, this model doesn't have them, so I probably shouldn't add them because it looks kind of weird because she's not thin enough. And it's kind of reshaping some of these muscles here. And this all just comes down to finessing. So this is like fine detail stuff. A lot of people really like this part. I don't mind this part so much. Like this kind of detail is kind of fun, like creating the, the interesting shapes between the muscles and the fat and the rolls and how all that works. I kind of like doing that detail work. What I don't like doing, though, is the final detail like the skin detail, where you go in on that microscopic detail. I don't like that at all. I usually don't even do it. But I think for this model, I might if I'm going to sell it, just so that it has that final detail. It's not there. The version I bought doesn't have that kind of detail. So they uh, save that for the actual skin texture part of bump mapping. And I might actually add it into the actual model itself as a... Uh, if so, I'll, I'll have an OBJ, and then also I'll have the actual ZBrush file, which will have the higher, the different dynamic ranges. So you'll have that, yeah, not dynamic ranges. What am I thinking of? The, ah, uh, oh man, my brain is not remembering what this is. I'm kind of just not feeling good right now. Under geometry, the subdivide, yeah, so the subdivision layers. I've been recording for a while and I just, I'm not very healthy, so sometimes it makes me very ill to just sit here and talk. So hey, thumbs up if you've been watching up to this part because this was really hard for me to make.
it's getting harder and harder for me to to do things like this. So, so here I start with a sphere, as you can see. And after I have the sphere kind of in place, then I'm going to go and use the move tool and kind of just start moving it around. And then I'm using the clay tool to kind of, there I'm, I'm taking clay away like that. It's kind of shaping it using the move tool. And so you want to get the breast the right shape from all the different angles. So to, in this case, if you want to just go for like a, um, a memorized shape, there's, you know, I guess you could call it the ideal breast. She has actually really nice breast. So, um, I can tell she's probably in her 30s, maybe later 20s. You kind of tell that by how the breasts are acting because of gravity, unless they get like a, you know, a, a boob lift or something, or they get implants or something. If it's all natural, once they hit, start getting around 30, you'll start getting this kind of shape where the, um, and I, I like it. I think it's better than, than younger, perkier boobs, which uh, don't, they have this like a little bit, they start sagging a little bit more. And I like that. It, just, it creates this really nice, kind of more rounded shape. And we'll go through that shape right now. So I'm just kind of fixing it to make sure it kind of matches the model. I want to get this, like I said, as close to the model as possible. Like you, you saw the shape I had, which was really nice already. But now I'm just kind of making sure it fits to the model really accurately. So one thing that's important is from this side angle, I think I showed it again in a little bit. So from this front angle, you'll notice that it kind of has this rounded shape right here, and then it kind of curves in right here, almost like a straight line. It almost creates like an upside down D right here, right? Boom, like that. With both, imagine both breasts going across like that. So that angle is really important, and that's usually what happens as women get to that more mature age. When they're younger, it kind of rounds out more. It kind of is a little bit higher too, rounds out more like that. And then the side boob here is created because, remember, this, imagine water balloons. You're, if you're a man, you can actually put water balloons on your pecs and fit them you know, the right size where they should be. And they, you can kind of feel how they wrap around. Like you lay down on the bed, you can feel how they wrap around your, your rib cage. And that's what gives the, that proper shape. So from the side view, you can see, because remember, they're, they're wrapping around. I also look from the under view to kind of show what I'm talking about. But they kind of wrap around the rib cage. And so this is part of the um, the sphere, but I pushed it down, so it's wrapping around. Similar to like, you know, when I was talking about to take a um, a Ziploc bag with water in it, and you like lay it on your arm, and it wraps around the arm, right? So this is wrapping around the rib cage. You want to make sure that you have that nice side boob wrapping around there. If you don't get the shape right, your boobs are gonna look weird, and people are gonna know they look weird. They're gonna look fake, like some anime character or something. And if that's what you're going for, a very stylized look. Mirror and weld just to make sure it's working right. And it looks like it is. And that's about where you want to be. So these are the shape. You can save this as a shape if you want to. So just before you mold it or anything, you can save this out as a nice brush shape. And then you can use it on another model. So like you'll know how to you know get the model to the point where you need to add breast to it. And then you just, bam, pop these breasts on there. And then, you know, fuse it together, the layers together, um, meld the layers together, and then redynamesh and sculpt and I'm gonna show you the kind of sculpting we're gonna do once we have it on here. I just really want to make sure all this is accurate. That's why I keep linking it up to the actual model. Like it looked it looked great. And I could get it looking great just by looking at it, but like I said I want it to be as accurate to this model as possible. So that you know what you're getting is pretty much the same thing if you were to buy it. And so here I'm gonna kind of just smooth out the edges and I'm gonna add a little bit of clay right here. So you notice this see this flesh right here? This is the pectoral muscle. This is not the breast, right? This is the under pectoral muscle that comes and attaches underneath the deltoid. You should be able to grab your hand right here. Like this would be like your three fingers or so, three to four fingers. You should be able to grab into here, like grab between the breast and between the deltoid and just put your hand in here and kind of grab there if you keep your fingers really close together. You should be able to kind of grab right in here. Just know that. Like, think about it. If you if, think about when you're sculpting, if you can't imagine grabbing that flesh in between the breast without touching the breast or the deltoid, then you, you did something wrong. That space should always be there. Even if someone has fake breast, that space is still there. Unless, I don't know, they got messed up, botched job, and their breasts are way too high. 
I don't know what happened there. So, some I hit a button and it like put me way back. I thought I lost all that data for a second. I was like, oh man, I don't want to do all that again. But luckily, it was still there. So I need to smooth out this this part right here. So I just kind of take in some clay away and then use the smooth brush. Some some people don't like using the smooth brush, and I can understand why. Like see right here, for example, instead of smoothing it out, I, I add clay. Add clay and then I just lightly smooth. As long as you use the smooth brush correctly, very light touch, right? You need to use a pressure sensitive um, pad that you're that you're drawing with. I don't sculpt with the mouse, I sculpt with the with the um well no I actually I don't use Cintiq anymore. Now I use a Huion a Huion tablet, so it's a the sixteen inch model and then you draw right on the screen. If you can't afford that, and that, that, that model's really great. I actually like it a lot. The Cintiq was really pissing me off. It was always disconnecting and stuff. Like, it was just having issues. So I decided to go to Huion, and I, and I don't regret my purchase at all. I love it so far. And I've had it for a while, and it's been... I don't know if they have the same longevity Cintiq does, but so far it's awesome. And it was like, it was like 500 bucks or something like that. And you can get the, you know, the, the cheaper model for even cheaper than that, like 300 bucks. And it's a great tablet to draw on top of. Like, it's a monitor. You're drawing on top of a monitor. But if you just want like a regular tablet, Huion makes a great tablet as well, and Cintiq has their one tablet, stuff like that. Just even if it's a cheap tablet, it's better than a mouse. So that's my point. Even if you only spend like eighty bucks on it, you get a tablet. You actually want that pressure sensitivity, and so you just want to just very lightly use the uh, smooth brush. The alternative method is just using the uh, clay buildup and just lightly, lightly adding clay, adding clay, you know, and taking away clay to get it smooth to smooth it out that way. But I don't, I don't see why. I don't know. I just don't like that method. I use it sometimes, but I, I've, I've gotten really good at using the smooth tool, and you just got to use it right. So sometimes going to this skin, this is actually a, um, a matte cap that I made, but it's just a, it's a modified version of the of the red wax. So I just took a, the red wax and I just um, changed the color a little bit, and then I think I turned down maybe the highlight or something or the. The different color adds in between cracks. I just change that a little bit, and so it's a customized back cap. I just use the move tool to kind of push the belly button together. Now I'm just looking at different mat caps to make sure everything looks right. I don't only really like how it looks. So I just smoothed it out. And then I use the standard brush. And I, I I dug in with the standard brush, and then kind of use the clay strip and kind of dig out a little bit there, and then add a little bit of skin on top like that, and boom. Get some nice, nice belly button that way. So this is like um, a default matte cap that comes with ZBrush. It's like a skin, basically a human skin, kind of. Right here, this is important. See, this looks like fake boobs. This looks like a boob job. How do you fix that? You just simply add fat right here. Add some clay strips and smooth it out a little bit. Bam, no longer boob job. Now it looks... Now it looks legit. Adding a little bit of the areola there, because areolas do have a little bit of three-dimensionality. They stick out a little bit, and then I use the standard brush to kind of pull out the nipple and add some little details with the standard brush. And this is YouTube, so they don't really like that kind of detail, so it doesn't matter. I None of my art videos really make money because YouTube stopped liking me a long time ago. So to support me, buy one of my courses. That'd be awesome. And, and you'll support yourself too, because it'll actually help you. So it's a a win-win situation. And I'm gonna stop recording this and continue. All right, so this is where we left off. I think this is the last file I have recorded. And so now I'm gonna add the lower part of the arm. So again, just bring in a cylinder. Again, you can just kind of eyeball this and look at it, or if you want it to match the model exactly, you can overlay it on the model. And again, if you don't have this model, if I end up not making my model for sale, I don't even know where to sell it at, honestly. I'm probably going to put it on one of those sites that let you, let you um, upload your models and for sale or something. I, don't know, I might just use one of those. Or maybe I'll just have it on my site as a file. And then, I, don't know, I don't even know how to do that, honestly. I think... Anyway, I'll figure it out. I'll probably just use one of those sites to do it with. But if not, you can also just buy another model. Or maybe you already have a model. And you just 
you this you do the same thing I did here, but you're going to base it off that model. But if you want to try to follow along exactly what I'm doing, based on the same model, then I'll try to make this model. So, or you can buy the model. I already showed you where to buy it. You can buy that, which is quite kind of expensive for just one little model. But um, twenty bucks is a lot of money, I think, for just a simple model. You can buy one of my full. You can buy my full entire three dimensional, you know, three D anatomy art course, which is like twenty three hours long for on sale for fourteen bucks. So. I say save your money, and I'll try to have this model that I've done for like three bucks or something, three to five dollars. I don't know. I don't know what their minimum is. They might not allow me to charge three dollars. So, but I know I've seen I've seen stuff on the site like Sketch Labs. I think I've seen it for like five bucks. But I'll see if it lets me do three. And I put a lot of time into it. And also, I'm, I'm a, I still have to put more time into it off camera. So to kind of finalize it and you know I, I it takes it take at least uh i don't know it took me at least just to record this video uh it took me like three hours i think because one was one hour 20 minutes the other one was like 48 minutes and this one is like um this one is 48 minutes so that right there is that's like three hours right there so that was three hours just to record, and then I also had to do some work off camera, and then I'm gonna do more work off camera. So, and then I and then I'm doing all this recording, and all this recording here to make the, the tutorial is taking me uh, a good two hours and or so, and then I'm gonna have to edit it all and all that kind of stuff. That takes like another another hour or two, depending on how much work I have to do. And uh, yeah, so it's a lot of work just to make this video for you guys to watch it. I at least put five hours just for the video itself that's a lot of work and i don't get paid anything for that youtube doesn't pay me nothing and i already know this will be demonetized i won't i won't get anything from views and i won't get that many views anyway because youtube hates me so the only way i'll get anything from all this work so not only did i put five hours of my time to make this i also spent eighty dollars just to have the models for you guys and so an easy way to pay me back would be just to buy the model if i am having the model or sell it'll be like three bucks buy the model or buy one of my courses on sale or buy my buy my how to draw awesome figures book so on amazon just type in how to draw awesome figures neil n-e-i-l fontaine or just go to my website actually masterpainnow.com and just click on my book and you can get a kindle version of my book for like seven bucks a lot of really good information in there so I'm just matching up, make sure everything is the right proportions and stuff with my original spheres. Everything's looking good. At this point, I feel like all the detail is pretty much there. And so now what I'm doing is I'm taking another model I did. I can't remember. Is this a model I did? I can't remember now. This might just be a weird, weird default ZBrush thing. That's not what I'm looking for. This is what I was looking for. This is what I did to show the breast. And I did this really quick face. That I did in another tutorial showing how to do faces. And it's kind of low res, which is fine. I'm just going to copy the head. And I'm going to put it over here. And attach the body. I'm going to do another head. Either I'm going to just do more work on this head here. This won't be the final head, you see. So I'll be doing a bunch of more work off, off camera. I'll probably another, another hour or two just for the head. So that um, it's a nice look, really nice looking face. That will be included with that final model. And I'll do some hair, just some basic hair to kind of just, you know, have something there to another layer you can turn off and on. And yeah, so that all that will all be available. And that's more work I have to do. And then if I do decide to add all the final like kind of skin details like little just kind of like little uh skin pores and things like that that's going to take a long time so the model itself um, i'll be I'll, by the time it's all said and done i'll probably uh, at least put eight hours into it maybe even 10. a lot of work goes into this stuff so if you're wondering well why are they charging what they're charging for these models especially some of these really higher end models now the 3d scans i don't know how much work that takes but you know, some of these models uh, take a lot of time, you know, especially if they have like high detail and stuff. 
that that whole process of adding the detail can take you know three hours. So now I'm just coming in here. I'm sculpting the knee, and uh, so how I like to do it is I like to um, see the shapes here. I kind of break it up like with the damp standard kind of carving in. You can use the crease brush or the draw sharp brush and blender. Kind of get that shape right here. It's kind of like a, um, a Superman emblem. You have the, the V part here, straight, and kind of goes like that. Kind of reminds you of the Superman emblem. And you have this bottom part, just kind of almost like scales. You know, you have like this kind of, or like, um, yeah, kind of like a scale or like a armor. We have this kind of V shape right here, then another V shape right here. And you can keep attaching those to the top of each other. I'm just kind of adding some of that muscle tone here. Even if it's not in the model, you can always blur it out, you know, blend it out. But I kind of wanted um, her to have a little bit nicer looking legs. So I just, and that usually comes with having a little bit of tone, a little bit of muscle tone. Kneecaps are looking a little bit weird. That's fine. I'll fix it. Kneecaps are weird anyway. Like, if you look at her final, like, so one thing I do is I add this patella and kind of smooth that out, and that kind of helps. That's not in the actual model. The model's knees look weird. Like knees are just weird looking things. If you just like stop to look at knees, like look at knees are weird. <laughs> and so now I'm just um, kind of going off the the model a little bit here because I want the legs to look nicer. So I'm going to make them a little bit more muscular. And these muscles here, they kind of come, think about the calf muscles as coming all the way up to like the back of the knee here. And they kind of have this like shape like that. That's because of the tendons. And I kind of added that little line because that's the crease line. That's like where you bend your leg a lot and you end up having a couple of wrinkled lines there. And sometimes you can see the bigger crease line. And then you have the Achilles tendon back here, which will attach. I don't, I don't do the um, hands and the feet in this one. I just use the hands and feet from another model. And then I'll just re-sculpt on top of those later if they need more detail. Because I, I have to dynamesh them, which gets rid of a lot of the detail. And so I have to go back in and sculpt that detail back in. But at least I just attach them and then re-dynamesh. So you just pull them in on a different layer, and then you uh, mirror that, mirror weld that over, and then you merge it together, just as, as we've been doing. And then dynamesh and blend it in. Now I'm just blending it in. So that part's easy. And also, uh, ZBrush actually comes with like default feet and hands you can use, even heads. And so it's just something to work on as a base because you can save a lot of time that way. And it takes a lot of time to sculpt. If I were to sculpt hands and feet from scratch, I have other models that I've sculpted from scratch. I really like using the... Um... So here's where I figured out what was happening. Let's see if I can figure it out right now. You know, I like using, um, what's it called, when I sculpt from scratch, like hands and feet. I really like using the, uh, what do they call it again? Z something, Z spheres. So you have these uh, Z spheres here you can use, like right here. And this allows you to kind of like create like a, um, anyway, if you've never seen Z spheres, it kind of creates something like this. And then this right here, like this, a base model I made, and it has all the hands and stuff on there. So this is one I've created myself, and then I can like skin this real quick, and then I can come in, and it just makes it really easy to add the um, the hands the way you want. You can like pose this, and then and then skin it, and then you can you know this is really good to like if you want to do a pose, I'd pose this however I want it, and then I would skin it, and then I would start adding all the details on top of that. So yeah, it's pretty pretty cool, um, awesome thing that's in that's unique to ZBrush. All right, so when I'm, see I'm, when I'm selecting one leg only, it's somehow selecting two legs. And I'm like, why is it doing that? And let's see if I can figure, if I remember how, okay, I've seen that that time it works. So what did I do differently? Let's see. Um, okay, so that's selecting two legs. Oh, you know what? I think I paused it. 
Yeah, I think I paused it and figured out what it was. And I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what it was. Honestly, I forget. I don't think it was. Let me see. It wasn't. Um, let me go backwards. Selecting two legs. So I'm selecting two legs. Anyway, I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been that something was like selected or something. I had to go into. Um, I'll show you on ZBrush. So I think what I had to do, in case, in case you ever run into that problem, I think I had to go to masking. Then I just hit clear a couple times just to make sure everything was cleared. And then I made sure under geometry that I didn't have any uh, any subdivisions. And actually, you can't even see the option right here on this model. So let me just go ahead and get a a model that might have something like that. Let's do this default one here. And see how it says, it says no, there's no subdivision right now. And I think I just went ahead and maybe I divided it and then I deleted lower or something like that just to like get rid of it. Is it like what didn't look like it was there? And I honestly, I can't remember what I did, but one of those things I think is what I did work. So do you ever have that problem? Try that. Or try closing ZBrush and reopening it again. Because see now, when I select one leg, now it's just selecting one leg. It's not selecting both. And I don't know what I did when I paused it, to be honest. Try to remember. I might have, I might have re redynameshed again. I don't know. So what this does, it's a really good trick to use. And you're going to want to use this trick a lot, especially when working with legs. Disappear one leg. So you just select the leg. And that cause it to be appeared and then you draw the selection again outside and then it and then it so you draw outside like that see that right there and that flips it that basically flips it if you just click outside so you hold down like i think it's shift and alt or something to to select this it'll tell you to, you should know how to use zbrush anyway to do the select tool and you just then you decide if you click outside it just makes everything visible again but if you draw outside it will flip it so now this leg is is invisible and I can just see this one leg. Now when you do this, it's not going to sculpt on the other leg. I don't know why that's the case. Um, it's kind of a bummer. I wish that if you had mirror selected that even though it's hidden, it would still draw on it. Maybe there's an option, but by default it doesn't. But what you can do is after you do all this sculpting, say I'm sculpting some of that muscle definition in there. This isn't in the model, so I'm just going by imagination. And uh, just it just comes just knowing the anatomy. And then I can mirror and weld. See, boom, it mirrors and welds it over. But what I didn't realize, look at the head. I didn't realize that the head was slightly off center. So when I added the head on, the head wasn't quite uh, center. Not a big deal. You can just add the head on last. as After you have all the body totally done. Um, as far as like, and then you add the head on last. And you can add all the final details uh, to your body. And when, you're, when you know you're not going to be remeshing anymore. That is, you're ready to just work on subdivision details. Uh, anyway, so what I did is I just um, copied the head again, and then I tried masking to see if that works, and it doesn't work. So when you mask out the head, it's still the, the weld. The mirror and weld doesn't respect the mask, so that's unfortunate. So then I had to um, basically copy the head, split it off. You have to split split visible whatever and then um, under sub tool and then I have it as its own layer and so now the head is separate and then I mirror weld the leg and then I have to put the head back on but notice it doesn't quite match up anymore because it wasn't matching up to begin with and that's fine so then I can just come in here and uh, I have to do a couple things I have to like pull it down and stuff and then eventually get the get that crack to kind of line up when I when I meld it I merge it and then uh, I had to just fix up some of this aberrations here so it took me a little extra time kind of annoying I could have just reattached a, a head though but whatever adding some more uh, detail on the inside of the thighs there some of the stuff I don't bother hiding one of the legs but 
but oftentimes it's easier to hide when relics. And so everything's looking pretty good. See, I haven't changed the button this time yet. You'll see the final model. I've kind of pushed the button a little bit higher, kind of gave her a more youthful butt. But I did that off camera, so. But I did tell you guys how I did it. And that's it. So that's all I have recorded for her. Um, let me know if I haven't made her available yet. If you really want this model available for like three bucks on, I'll probably make her available on uh, what's that site called? Let's see. So yeah, the site is called um, sketchfab.com. And there's some decent models on Sketchfab. It's hard to find nude models though. There's only like a couple artists on there that actually do nude models. The rest are... 3D scans are in clothes for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. But yeah, they're in clothes. And different kinds of clothes. Sometimes they're just in like a bikini or something. But um, yeah, anyway, 29 bucks is a pretty good deal for this because you get all these poses. These are all 3D scans. And you also get the high definition. Um, you know, if, you'd if you like having all that stuff, they have the, the different mapping and stuff. If, you if you're into all that to get a nice, you know, realistic render. So if you like using render programs and stuff, I just like the sculpting aspect of it. So yeah, anyway, um, pretty cool for 29 bucks, not bad. And they have some other stuff, uh, this human, they, they use human engine to do this, but they have some other stuff also of the same person. That is the human engine guys have some other models that are, that are, they're not too bad for the price, but some of them are pretty, pretty high price. I think for what they are, they have all kinds of stuff on here. Here's the best selling. I just I just went up here and I just sorted it by best selling. You have these this hand model here, which is kind of cool. Looks like it comes with a couple different uh, hands with different levels of detail. It's good for studying and stuff. For um, I think it's seven bucks isn't bad. Fifty seven dollars for this full model here. Looks like it's fully colored and everything. Nice little anime character. Probably ready. Probably game ready. I don't know why else it'd be that expensive unless it was game ready. Typically when something is more expensive like that, it's because it's game ready, it's ready to be animated and all that. Um, you can see like $30 for whatever this is. Looks like a bunch of cartoon characters. An arm. I don't know. $8.90 for an arm. Doesn't doesn't seem like it's all that detailed either. I don't know, that's pretty lame. So you can see there you know, buying 3D models isn't cheap. Now some of them are free. There's, there's but the free stuff on here isn't very good. It's a reason I think there's a reason why it's free. But there, there are some free models on here that are that are not bad. Like I don't know, they're they're pretty low res, but they're not like horrible. Here's a shoe for twenty five dollars. So anyway, you look on here, like just to get an idea of the price. It's like, wait, here's some anatomical uh, characters. It looks like my my anatomical character comes with my course. You can get my course for cheaper than this on sale. My full entire three D anime course, like twenty three hours long. And so you get the entire course, plus you get for free with the course, you get the entire detailed anatomy model. So it comes with it for free. So if you get my course for 15 bucks on sale, you're getting the awesome anatomy model for free. And it's not going to be like this. Like it's broken down in individual shapes, all the names, really good for studying. And in fact, let me show you that really quick. So it opens up in Blender. And here it is. So this comes with my... My course for free. It's a free Blender tool. I made it in Blender so that way it'd be free. So anyone can get Blender for free. They can open up this. They can open up this model for free in Blender. So, and so uh, if you look at it with the color on, well, I have to I have to set it to the right thing because right now it's not on. Let's go to here. It's on a matte cap. So if I change this to EV, you can see the color. Oh, actually, maybe it doesn't work on EV. Oh, it kind of does. Oh, that's right. It has this. Um, so you have to fix this when you get. I, I talk about this in the in the course. When you open up my file in the course, you have to add an image to the background. I show how to do it. It's just a really quick video, and I show how to add this image to the background. So just, let me instead open up a different version that already is already fixed. It already has the proper background image. It's for the lighting, and. All right, so anyway, you have to download a free HDRI image and then just swap it out, and I show easily how to do that. And so this is just the quick EV render, and you can see that it uh, all comes out. And all these muscles are individual muscles that we uh, show how to sculpt each one. We, you, do, you make your own version of this, too, in the, throughout the course. Like I show you how to do each muscle, where they attach on the bone, all that. 
But just in case your, yours doesn't come out good enough, you always have this one for free as reference, and you can look at it. And all the muscles are, are layered. So you have the muscles here. This is like the upper body. Then you have the forearm. You have the thighs. And so if you click on any of these muscles, it'll show you where it's at on there. It gives you the name of the muscle. And each muscle is on its own separate layer, so you can turn that muscle off and on. And, uh, for example, if you click on this one, which is the rectus femoris, you can then turn it off, and you'll see that it's not there. Turn it on, so you can turn muscles off and on. And then also, of course, you can render this out in, sorry about the dog in the background. I'm going to go ahead and just show you cycles really fast. That's just the preview, and then, of course, you can print it out with cycles, and it comes out looking pretty awesome. So, there you go. And if you've liked this video, it helped you at all, take the second, please, to just hit the like button. I know I always forget, like, I'll like a video and stuff, and then, like, I'll just forget to like it. So, you don't have to do it, obviously, but it literally just takes you a second, and it really does help. So, even though I don't make anything from YouTube, it helps the algorithm so that other people can see the video. So, all right, cool. Thanks for watching.